Hungry Root. All you busy, busy people out there who do not have time to go to the grocery store, plan meals, all that rigmarole that goes into eating healthier. Well, Hungry Root is helping you eliminate all that time that you could be doing whatever it is that you love doing. Because I myself hate growing in the grocery store. I hate planning meals. There is nothing worse than be like, what should we eat tonight? Oh, God, we, we suffer through that on the daily. But not with Hungry Root. Hungry Root makes it easier for everyone to eat healthy. So they support all of the major diets and lifestyles, including gluten-free, vegan, vegetarian, dairy-free, low-carb, and others. Uh, they can help you save money uh, because uh, it can be very wasteful going to the grocery store, like planning for a week, and especially if you're like a single servant person, you go grocery stop- shopping for like three or four days, and then your friends ask you to go out, and then that goes to waste. Not with Hungry Root. Hungry Root also recommends recipes and groceries based on your taste, so mm. you can take their suggestions and choose anything you want. They have fresh produce, high-quality meat, seafood, pantry staples, healthy snacks, and sweets. Whether it's great tasting meals, saving time, or saving money, Hungry Root can do all of the above. Right now, Hungry Root is offering the Vile File listeners 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash V-I-A-L-L to get 40% off your first delivery and get free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Vol Files Going Deeper Edition. I'm your host, Nick, joined by the household and my lovely fiance. All right, well, you're part of the household. I don't really. First, it was as like pop culture correspondent, and now, like, you just kept showing up oh my god yeah you in the best possible way <laughs> no uh, you would say i'm going to work and i would say i'm coming with no. yeah nonsense nonsense uh we have a full a pretty full house Allie is always is with us from uh, st paul our sweet sweet boy justin is in the in the room and uh making her is this your debut yeah officially first time on the mic yeah uh, that hey. lovely voice you are hearing is another allison Nick only hires Allison's or this, this one's got two L's. Names. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Wait, Allie doesn't have two L. Allison's one L. Are you okay? <laughs> me? I have been working for you since 2020. You did you not know just ask me if I have two L's I can't in my name. Spell, he can't spell. Allie. I don't. Am I? Are At you? Least are he you gets okay? It right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little sure. offended. Why are we? Expe- why are we expecting <laughs> Nick, Nick to know how to, spell to know how to spell anything? anything? Because I've been your employee for four years. I still am not sure if your last name's He's... actually Martin or Van Dam. Yeah, wait, what is it? Honestly, I'm confused oh, as well. Well, well, he knows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it is kind of confusing. <laughs> uh... He still asks me whenever he's booking flight stuff, like, can you confirm this? Is this really, is this your birth date? Is this how you spell your name? I'm just double checking. <laughs> it's just... I once showed up to an airport for a flight. And I booked a ticket, misspelled my own name. It was a big issue. Was it? Wow. It wasn't fun. Yeah. Almost didn't make my flight. There are certain things my brain does well, and there are certain things my brain does not do at like, all. At all. <laughs> uh, yeah, at least you double check. I'm so, the type of person that'll just wing it and be like, hope this works. You no, know, I tried that. Yeah. yeah around you, your age. You yeah, reap what you sow. Sure. Oh. <laughs> I paid yeah. the consequences. There well, you welcome. Go. Thank uh, you. Allison. It's good to be with you. Well, we have a lot to get into. First, we have an amazing guest, as always. Uh, Obviously. The one, the only, Whitney Rose is with us um, from, well, as you, many of you know, uh, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City to discuss and really put a bow on season four. Yeah. Of, and they're uh, in the reunion. Of Salt Lake City. The where reunion, they are now. Where they are now. You know, what's Monica. next? Yeah, you know, all of all of the above. Yeah, you know all your all your burning questions. Obviously, you have many, and as you have come to expect on this show, we've addressed them all. So we are excited for you to listen to uh, Whitney. Obviously, a lot of uh, discourse regarding the Tom episode. Yep. Oh boy, <sighs> we should probably yeah. maybe start there. Give our thoughts, baby. What what were your thoughts? He hated me. I mean, I couldn't ask so? a single question without him being like, "Are you fucking kidding?" <laughs> it was like was I triggering. I think maybe um I don't know if he's the biggest fan of 
women in general, um, and especially ones he doesn't know questioning his behavior. My favorite response of his to Natalie was when Natalie was like, Schwartz, that seems really in- like easy for you to say. Why is it not as easy for you, Sandoval? And he goes, me? Oh, you- dude. <laughs> he yeah, just like exactly. threw dude at her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he definitely was triggered that I asked him quite literally anything. Is it wrong that I, like, I feel, I have mixed feelings about, I feel kind of bad. I don't, I don't like that Mr. Tom Sandoval and to a lesser degree, Mr. Tom Swartz are catching some heat from their time on the Vile Files because that, I don't, that, I don't like that. It, it was it certainly wasn't my intention. I, I really, I really wanted this to be an opportunity for the both of them, specifically Mr. Tom Sandoval. But you also can't speak for them. No, and they, you know, and you tried to drive that ship as clear as possible and they just dug it, more so <sighs> Sandoval, in a hole. So I, I, I will say I've had very similar conversations with Tom offline mm-hmm. and they're, this is how he feels. Like I've, you know, asked and answered before. Mm-hmm. Um, wasn't sure what he would say when he came on the show, but... You know, Tom is a reactive person. Are you um, glad that I found the receipts and proved the timeline to be? I think for comic relief, yes. I don't know if anyone really believed Tom. It was, I think a lot of people picked up on the fact it was fascinating in real time to witness uh, Tom Sandoval try to gaslight his way out of a situation. Yeah. yeah. You know, because it, it is, like I said to him, it was scary just how believable he was, just how and how passionate he was that he was telling the truth. Yeah. Like even me, I don't like lying. I'm an I'm a really honest guy. It's not that I'm sure I've I've told lies before. I'm not infallible. But even when I'm telling the truth, sometimes awkwardly, I might even look like I'm not because I'm I can, you know, if someone's coming at me hard, I I don't you get defensive. Yeah. Like, it's just natural instinct. But, but the way Tom answered the question, it was, he's very convincing. Well, it started with, you were two hours late. <laughs> and then it was like, you were supposed to show up 5.30 to 6.30. You showed up at 8.30. And then I was like, well, actually, he left your house at 6.50. And he was like, no, he was an hour late. And then, like, Jason and Jason, I don't know who those people are. I guess his producers were, like, waiting yeah, for know. you for hours. I mean, it just, like, I know never, what, the story that he was believed never really added up. I know his version. I, I can tell you how he has his version in his head. Because, like I mentioned on the show, when he asked me for the favor the night before, he texted me. Did he call? No, he texted me. Then I called him. And he's like, hey, man, can you do this? And I'm like, I, again, busy. I can't give you, like, a hard time right now. Things are fluid. But, like, I will definitely try. And if I can, I want you on mine. Uh, so I left things open-ended mm. during the day and didn't reach out to him until the afternoon. So I'm sure throughout mm. the day, his team was probably asking, Is, when's Nick going to come? Yeah. When's Nick going to show? I bet that actually happened. You know sure. what I'm saying? I don't think Tom made that up, but he sliced and diced like fragments. So it could be tit for tat. Yeah, of the previous day and turned it into yeah. A, yeah. an alternate universe. Yeah. But like, so fast yeah the way he does it i will say a lot of people appreciated natalie and her persistence with the text yes yes like some people could say that yeah it was random that you like brought it up later on but i don't think it was well first of all it took me a second to find it because it was just nick being like i'm done recording going to whole foods which he texts me all the time (laughs) so i had to find the actual date and time and figure it out so that's what happens when you stay connected you know (laughs) you know you have the receipts you have the receipts Um, but no, I just, I knew it was a lie. And so there was just no way that Nick started that podcast at 830. And it was like, was pissing me off that he was lying on him. So I was like, no, you know what? I'm not going to let this Did the lie. Lord's work. And yeah. I did the Lord's work. What did we think of Swartz? Because I've, I, I've heard like mixed <laughs> reviews because on one end, I feel like some people appreciated some accountability from Swartz. He, mm-hmm. he did give a handful of times his authentic answers. And then I see, I see like a lot of mixed opinions on on one end you know tom sports is trying to be a friend to his friend tom sandoval and i also understand that because i've been in situations with girlfriends that i know better than whoever it is they're talking to and they might say something that does come off the wrong way or even if it's you 
and like something comes off the wrong way and they're like, what? And you're like, no, no, this is what he means. Like, yeah. this, you know, like you know them so well that you're able to kind of say like, I know that sounds crazy, but like that's not what he's trying to say. Yeah. No, so I, I don't that. fault Schwartz for doing that. But I think it's he is he is loyal to a fault. Yes. But like quite literally, like his people pleasing is a problem. Oh, absolutely. In his life. I saw this very interesting TikTok, uh, a psychologist. I don't remember who it was, but in this video, they talk about the similarities between, I'm going to reluctantly say this, but people pleasing and narcissism. Mm -hmm. And it was, I saw it like two days ago and it was like on the heels of us dropping the Tom episode and thinking about the dynamic duo of Tom Schwartz and Tom Sandoval and sure. how the way this psychologist talked about the similarities and how there are, there's a lot of similarities and very little differences was was quite fascinating. But yeah, his his Tom Schwartz's people pleasing is it's beyond to a fault. It's like a problem in his life. It is stunting his growth mm -hmm. as a human. And I like I I like Tom Schwartz and I and I've gotten to know Tom Sandoval and he does have good qualities. I think with with me, I'm able to like still have some sort of relationship with I guess both Toms, more yeah. specifically Tom Sandoval because I am someone who's always been good at setting boundaries. And that's what mm -hmm. that's all about. Like I look at Tom and I can I can let Tom into my life because I know what to expect from Tom and I know what not to expect from Tom. Tom Sandoval can be a great friend when your interests are aligned. If you and Tom Sandoval want the same things, great friend. You can count on him. Mm -hmm. He will get all the stuff. He'll do all the plans. He will own it as long as your interests are aligned. And if your interests aren't aligned, you better not count on Tom Sandoval. And so for me, it's just like, I have no problem letting him into my space. I don't, I don't know how he feels about me right now. I think he, he's probably mad. He probably blames me for the episode. But I just know what to expect from a guy like Tom. And I'm, I, I, I'm open to being Tom's friend because I, I, if Tom wants a friend like me, <laughs> the, the, tough love, the, the, Tom, the tough love friend. But, but it also wasn't even like he knew what questions you were going to ask ahead of time. He has known. I mean, you've had the conversations before. Yeah. He was aware. You're like, this is what I want this interview, the outcome to be. All, all of the interviews are the same. It's the floor is open. You can share your piece. You can write your name. That was all there for him. So, you know, and it is just, what you make of it. Yeah. And he just it's like you weren't asking tough questions. You weren't. We, I it To me, I didn't feel like we were as hard on him as some people or we could have been or we should have been or I whatever. I felt like we were I, trying. Yeah. I felt like we were we were questioning his answers but we weren't like drilling him right well, i didn't think our questions were that tough it wasn't that complicated it was more like hey man i just i mean he's like i've learned so much You're like well okay what have you learned yeah i think the elaboration <laughs> part was kind of the and that's the thing we've yeah. all made mistakes you know, totally we've all fucked up we've hurt we've all hurt people we loved it's just that <laughs> the disconnect and both of them seem so resistant to reflection when i did tom's podcast and it's something I wanted to ask him on uh, when he came on ours. Because I asked Tom when I did his, I said to him, I, I know people like you. You seem like someone who's a sucker for a good moment. you know." And Tom said, I do love a good moment, oh, man. man. And I was like, well, maybe you should just be single. Like, Maybe you're just not meant for a committed monogamous relationship because you love a moment. And in those moments, you want to live in that moment yeah and you do not want to be handcuffed by things like monogamy uh, expectations of a partner or you know when things are in but then he was like no man i want to like you know he just wants to be in love i don't and then like schwartz god bless him he just seems to be allergic to purpose <laughs> well i think his purpose now is schwartz and sandy's and he'll pr maybe now he will die but it's so i you know PR. it's weird because in some ways i don't fault schwartz the thing about schwartz is like kramer from seinfeld there's a one scene in, in Seinfeld where Jerry's talking about Kramer and he's just like, I don't understand it. He just like, oh no, George is. He just like, he doesn't have a real job. He just falls into money. Look at Tom Schwartz. Is he, well, how old is he? 40? If not, 40 ish. Like 42. Yeah. Super attractive guy. Was a model. Never really had 40. a job. Got onto TV. I don't know what he makes, but he's doing just fine. His job is Tom's 
Schwartz. His house Schwartz. is full of plants. He's got plants, oh. pet you know, bugs. and he's just he's pet bugs. life has not made life has not shown up on Tom Schwartz's <gasps> doorstep and said, "Hey, you have to like join the real world now." Like it's just never happened to him. The world hasn't made Schwartz grow grow up, and he doesn't have any interest in doing it on his own. Mm. Anyone in this room know a lot about real estate? Like because him. there was a lot of discourse What's about Tom's offer to Ariana. And then there are a lot three. of- Three. It was three. Yeah. You know, Tom's saying, well, I offered a million dollars more than we bought it for. But I think there is some confusion in people who know about real estate in terms of what that number actually means, you know, because they own it together. And then there's like closing costs and things like that. So Tom offering- Ariana three million dollars is that even like enough to turn a profit I don't I that's the thing I don't know I just think it's it's more complicated it's not like as if Ariana would get a three million dollar check no because they and could walk away scotch-free they split the assets a real estate attorney like emailed us after listening to the episode and he said that it wasn't it's common for when people to divorce or separate that one of the spouses sells the assets to the other so it's not uncommon and yeah I'm, I'm curious as to like how so the email reads, hi, Nick. So you're in the midst of a divorce, but your ex-spouse is the one moving out of the house. What can you expect next? Wow. Longtime divorce lo lawyer Bill Gentry is available to discuss what going through a divorce can anticipate if their former spouse is vacating their home, when they will want to cash out their equity, what happens if the home ultimately needs to be sold, what is the best way to handle negotiations? Quote, frequently, the spouse who is willing to move out of the house will want to cash out their equity as soon as the divorce is final. A lot of times assets are shifted around by giving the vacating spouse much more of any 401k or pension. However, eliminating legal responsibility for the mortgage will remain a problem until the mortgage is satisfied. An agreement with your former spouse should be negotiated as part of the divorce settlement, whether it's included in the divorce paperwork that gets filed with the court or not. That's basically what you're saying. Like the, the asset will be shifted. However, they stole a cost that remains. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't, I don't think Tom's offer to Ariana is as attractive as he positioned it mm. yeah on our show mm -hmm. i could be wrong because i don't i don't i'm not an expert in this department i'm sure we'll get more feedback i'm, sure, I was about to say, I'm sure it'll drops. be like very yeah. well i'm also sure it will be like very similar to that email you just read where we'll all be like huh <laughs> after like the legal words please like, explain like in five yeah we you know we just, need the dumb we need dumb the version. layman's yeah, term yeah. exactly um usually yeah. when i get like you know, if I read something like that, I'll copy and paste it into chat GPT. And I'm like, can you please explain this? Like I'm five and I'll be like, imagine you had toys yeah. and you have to like. We need someone to break down what it would potentially look like for a house that Ariana and Tom purchased for two mil. And then there was an offer for three mil, assuming closing costs. They'll have to make some assumptions. Well, they, but they, they bought it for two. We also know that Ariana and Tom didn't each put in a million. He said they each put up about 250K. That's their down payment, sure. But they split the... Bought for two, assets. and then what is it worth now? Because he said that he did renovation, solar panels, blah, blah, blah. So what's the value of the house now? I mean, and does yeah. three carry over? I mean, we couldn't even do math yeah. last couple weeks ago. So I don't know if we're <laughs> going to solve this problem. Do not make me not do on that. Air. We'll get into more Vanderpump recap uh, on Reality Recap next Tuesday, along with some Housewives and some other stuff. But I do want to just briefly... Did you watch... I know Natalie and I watched. Yeah, I did. Uh, the only one scene I want to reference this episode. Was it the Katie scene? Kind of, but not about Katie. It was more about, it was Lala reaching out to Raquel. For all of Tom Sandoval's faults, he's not that sophisticated. You know what I'm saying? Like this idea that Ariana and Lala and even Rachel, I think Rachel recently on her tell all thing is like basically saying, Tom Sandoval mastermind this whole... Tom Sandoval is not a mastermind. No. He's just not. He is a reactive, emotional guy. Mm -hmm. Who and, is very manipulative. And probably modes over boundaries, like, left and right. Manipulative. I think he's very capable of being manipulative, yes. Yeah. But it's so obvious to me. Well, sure, because you're, you're not, not like in under it. his spell. And you're not... What yeah. spell? I, I I don't think Tom Sandoval is I that think, much of a mastermind. I think he I very think... much had Raquel, Rachel manipulated, controlled, and under this like... Also, like when you like what? someone, the chemicals firing in your brain, like you're so in it. Like it's hard not to... Like, yeah, it's easier said than done, but uh, pulling I, yourself out is... I just, uh, I think 
the Rachels, the Raquels, the like Lala. I just don't. I think while Tom has his issues, we listen. We've covered it. We've heard him. He's not, you know, super big on growth right now. That doesn't seem to be his big focus. He's just not the the mas- I just don't think he's this mastermind that is capable of you know being the puppet master of all these people where every all these other adults can imply that their own choices were less theirs and more Tom's. I disagree. Why do you disagree, baby? Because I, and I think we saw it. He coached. I mean, we saw it with Ariana in season two or whatever that was. He coached Rachel. Like he very much is like, this is how this is going to go. Mm. This is what we need to say. This is our story. This is how it went. They like could this disagree is- with him. They're not children. Sure, you can. I think, I think he <laughs> manipulated them. I just don't know Tom to be that. I think you're underestimating him. <laughs> I don't. Maybe. I, I think also just like there's a fear mm-hmm. as well I, with like being seen a certain way. So she kind of. I to... guess it's all a matter of perspective. I suppose. I just don't. I don't know. I think while well, Tom is wrong, I just he also is a convenient scapegoat for his other castmates. Also, may not want to take full accountability. Sure. Like Lala, I'm I'm glad Lala is giving Rachel an opportunity. Rachel does doesn't you know this whole outcast thing. You know, I, well I don't agree with how Rachel's handling things. Like I don't think she needs to be ostracized from so- society. But at the same time, Lala, your timing is a bit suspect. Sure. It's like where where was this empathy for the reunion last season? Yeah. And also like Raquel, mon- why aren't you just just be on Vanderpump? Yeah. It's like she's. I don't know. We'll get more into it during reality recap, but that's what Lisa was saying, not in this premiere, but like in the like in interviews, she had said that if you're going to speak about the situation, you might as well have been on the show. Yeah, might as well get paid. I know she's not getting that uh, at iHeart. Probably not. Yeah, I've actually heard some some uh, iHeart tea about the Rachel show. I'll share with you guys on uh, reality recap. (gasps) Yeah, next next Tuesday. I I just want to say to the audience that I think my fiance Natalie is one of the most stylish people out there. I do. I think Natalie's a tastemaker. Thank you. You've elevated my style. I mean, oh my God. What, I feel what, like what would I be what, what would what oh would I be God. wearing oh my God. now if we Chelsea didn't Chelsea boots. Chelsea skinny boots, skinny jeans. jeans oh a my really God. Tight button up also this, collared shirt. Called the girl I wasn't even effects. I wasn't even planning on mentioning this, but just PSA out there for all the men who might listen and specifically the ladies who have male companions in their lives. You really got to get them off the skinny jeans. <sighs> I know it's probably hard for all the Midwesterners out there who probably just starting, just started wearing skinny jeans because usually they kind of go a little slow. You know, one of my buddies I grew up with like started wearing skinny jeans maybe like two years ago because he was getting out of the boot cut era. But anyways, like I can, as someone who wore some skinny jeans for a good decade, I can tell you life's a lot more comfortable these days. I second that. I was going to say that to have like flowy jeans, walk around and not oh, feel restricted. My goodness, another level. Anyway, I have Natalie to thank for uh, me keeping up with the uh, my, style icon. The comment style. The reason I bring this up. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I mean, that's what I've been <laughs> waiting on. Jesus. Do you think Dorit has good style? Because Dorit refers to herself in her intro is basically like some style icon, like a self-proclaimed style icon. And while I am not one person. I, I am not someone, I may have an opinion, but my opinion doesn't matter when it comes to Dorit's style. Because like, what the fuck do I know? I was wearing skinny jeans two years ago. But all from where I can sit, my uneducated, fashionable opinion, all Dorit does is wear just really expensive shit. And does that make one mm-hmm. stylish? Or does it just make them rich and lazy? Listen, yes, there is definitely a difference in... Having money and being able to afford just the most expensive brands and wearing them and being like, well, it's Chanel. So, like, obviously it's fashionable and being able to find pieces and put together an outfit Mm -hmm. and make something what it is. That being said, I think her style isn't bad. I mean, I think it's she's definitely made some questionable decisions. But who am I? to? Yeah, I mean, you have to take risks when it comes to fashion. But Uh, I think she always looks good. Besides that, um, she had her hair done in some like real funky, like gelled swoop thing. I don't really know what was going on with that. But other than that, I think she's 
I think she's okay. doing fine. I was, I was genuinely curious. I will say I her, her I, fashion has like toned down over the years. Yes, I would agree. Along with Erica Jane's. Yes. And I think that's because a lot of people like clocked her. They were like a brand or a logo does not equate fashion. That's yeah. tea. Yeah. She would wear like head to toe like Louis Vuitton or something. Yeah. Chanel. Yeah. And would be like, what do you mean? She's like, well, it's $70,000 outfit. So. And it's like, okay, like, well. Like, I, I, yeah. I just, I just think you have great <laughs> yeah. taste. Well, thank you very much. Because it's, very it's kind. Con- you're confident about it. You know what you like. You know what you dislike. Mm-hmm. It always looks good. Natalie, I was wearing an outfit the other day and I was like, why does this look so familiar? And I was like, oh God, it looks exactly like one of Natalie's outfits. And I was like, I just what was duped it? it. What was That's it? That's true influencing there. I know. I no, It was like, it was just basically all black. And then it was like oversized blazer, black shirt, black leggings. And then I was like, oh, I'll just do my cream boots. And I was like, it's literally Natalie's oh, Gypsy Rose outfit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Yeah. That was I will say, it rose. was a moment for the short kings out there because I went shopping in my father's closet and it was a perfect size on me. So, blazer? shout out. The yeah. blazer? Period. Erica Jane doesn't get it, does she? Mm. Get what? The earrings. It, the whole earring scene where she gets like a call from her lawyer and being like, hey, I won the case. And she's like, I told you all not to cast judgment. Don't, don't rush to judgment. I don't think any of her peers... And I think the majority of the audience at this point thinks that she was in on it, you know? I don't, because I don't think they'd be hanging out with her if they actually thought that Erica knew that she was stealing money. I think a lot of them came out and said that they didn't think she knew about it. They just didn't like how she handled the yeah, exactly. mm-hmm. responsibility or dealing with the victims. Like, but that's what it was. Erica's acting like she is vindicated and mad at the rest of the women because they're not apologizing. And it's just like, yeah, I think in you, the, that's in, not why you're getting criticism at this point. You're getting criticism because you're still fighting for the rights for these earrings. And even though you're winning on a technicality, because, yes, you can't trace all the funds and prove that this money was, you know, she's winning on an accounting argument, not a moral it's argument. Not a, not a good look. Either and way. so it's just weird that she is so and she gets so triggered when she gets asked about it. As if like no one understands her plight. I think in this specific group, she wanted like a victory moment because she was crucified before, and that's why she was expecting more of a response. Yeah, but like I don't think she. It's com- yeah. f- it seems to be flying completely over her head. I'd love to have Eric on and ask her about it. I don't. I don't. I don't know if it's going to go well. Does I your don't... perspective change of her knowing that now she's sitting down for a special with the victims? I saw that. I'm oh. excited to see that. Uh, well, it all depends on what is said. But up into this point. There is no sense that Erica understands the criticism she's receiving. What it seems like is like Erica is still trying to prove to everyone that she's not guilty. Even though no one's questioning if she's guilty, they're just expecting her to do the right thing. And she's still trying to prove her innocence, which kind of makes her sound more guilty in a weird way. Yeah. Like she's making it relevant still. Well, yeah. I mean, like that whole call was more about like, hey, I didn't steal this money. And everyone's like, no, no, we... We know, but like... But you still stole money. But but your husband stole a lot of money from people and used some, you know, like... And you're wearing a million dollar earrings right. or whatever the fuck they... Meanwhile, all the victims are like... Yeah. 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 It's, so it's... it's um, But I am very curious to see how that goes. When when is that a separate special? Is that part of the... When's that coming it's up? It's not a part of Bravo. I believe it's a Hulu special. So I think it's like the... A continuation of the documentary that slammed her originally. So it's like a there's cartoon. a lot of Hulu Bravo crossover these days. What? Maybe there's something in the works. Yeah. How do we feel about Halle Bailey uh, clapping back against the haters for hiding her pregnant pregnancy? Everyone's like mad at her, accusing her of f- gaslighting for Dude. not disclosing her pregnancy to them. People are fucking weird. People are so weird. It's none of your fucking business. It's just so wild because like we obviously have not shared our due date, and that is purposefully. I chose, I told Nick. Or a wedding date. Or a wedding date. But I was like, I do not need to have people questioning the size of my stomach, questioning any choice I make because of uh, how far along I am or anything like that. And it's just, I mean, like going back to the nursery, it's like people, dude, it's like I showed a room full of (laughs) 
piranhas and was like, and my baby's going to sleep wrapped in pastrami, like laying in this little <laughs> bed. Like that is what they acted like I showed them. Like you can going to turn our daughter into fish bait. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> it's like people are scary with their, and, and I know it's their probably feedback? just going to get, yeah. yeah, I know it's just going to get worse. When it comes to parenting, Jeez. yeah. And Buckle everyone's, up, everyone's, you know, the best mother ever. They've never made a mistake. They've never. That's why we just have to not listen. No, for sure. Being in the public Leave Halle eye Bailey alone. does not equate to having to share every personal moment. I can't like, that's call just... her gaslighting. She said, I never lied or even said anything about it. Honey, making a joke about my nose was the farthest I went. I'll never understand why you're mad. I protected my own peace. Wouldn't you do the same? And I'm going to share pics now if I want because my son is here safely. If you don't want to see it, just keep scrolling. God bless you. And then she said, my hormones have been on 10 recently, so I'm going to go back to staying <gasps> off Twitter, which is definitely me because I like. Yeah. No. That's well, good for weird. her for protecting her peace and for speaking, holding firm. Yeah. Speaking of weird people, like, I mean, we've all know you talked about this, but the discourse around Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey has just gotten so weird now. It's It's really has like, leaked into other pockets of the zeitgeist so to speak and it is kind of fun to see another like sports commentators commenting on this you know uh chris long has a podcast i'm a fan of their show uh very successful football player uh and he was just like if you have a problem he's like i'm not even a fan of taylor swift i don't listen to her music i don't consume her content but if you're a guy and you have a problem with 20 seconds of taylor swift on a foot uh being shown on a football game, then you have a micro penis. And I couldn't agree more. <laughs> oh, really? It's a, such a weird. Who cares? It's such a weird thing to care about. Yeah. And also, like seeing them on the field, you can see how genuinely happy they yeah. are. And it's like, why heart? are you like, so what? mad That's that awesome. they're happy? I love NFL football and I love it because it's drama. It's my Dungeons and Dragons. It's how I nerd out, you know, that and reality TV. And while I love the sports aspect of it, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey like having a love affair on the football field like it's like it is a real life rom-com it's in the drama of Travis Kelsey performing while his girlfriend's watching and playing well or if he doesn't play well and then we can just talk about that and yes maybe you can have some discourse around it but like it is crazy just the conversations around it yeah it is nuts do you think Taylor Swift's the most powerful person in the world right now absolutely yes do you think she's aware of her power yes Yes. Isn't it crazy? Good for her. It's actually really crazy. I mean, you could argue she's one of the most powerful. And I don't, I'm not even saying that hyperbolically. I mean, like quite literally, she's one of the president yeah. of the United States. Yeah. I think the part that makes her powerful is the fact that she knows she's so influential. Because she said in documentaries, like, I'm fully aware that that's not normal. There's no one else who has her fan base. No. But I also think what makes it different is she knows from personal experience, how it can just be completely stripped away from her. She went yeah. through her entire phase That's where right. she was not physically seen for a year. She like that whole, you know, in between before reputation, like when Kanye and Kim and the phone call happened, she just completely went off the grid. She truly was like, everybody was, hates me. Like they're, the whole world turned against her. Taylor Swift yeah. is over party was trending on Twitter for the longest time. Yeah. I mean, I really respect her desire despite all her power and fame to, have as much normalcy in her life as she can. I mean, I think if you didn't, I mean, if it were me, I'd go, I'd go There's crazy. There's a, yeah. a lot of famous people who don't though, Yeah, who don't successfully accomplish what she's doing. I don't know. It's just, it's so bizarre, the discourse around it. Mm -hmm. It's just, why can't we just enjoy it? It's so- it's, They're happy. It's just, a, it makes watching football so fun. And for all the guys out there who wanna just like wake up on a Sunday and do nothing but watch football all day, like Taylor Swift is making it easier for you to do that because your partner who might be a fan of Taylor Swift is maybe a little bit more interested in watching the football yeah. that they weren't before. Why is this a problem? I, everyone gets to eat. How is it bothering you? <laughs> it's so fucking weird. Yeah. I don't get yeah. it. I don't either. I think we have uh, another jam-packed episode for you. We will be back on Tuesday um, for our reality recap. Really getting in the weeds of some Vanderpump, some Housewives, some Traders. Y'all won't see me bachelor. for a while. That's crazy. We'll, we'll miss you when mm -hmm. that comes. Anyway, uh, Whitney Rose coming up next. We got uh, also in the docket, really excited about this, Denise Richards. It was so much fun interviewing Denise. 
just so she was so cool and chill yeah. and uh so much fun talking with her that's uh next week on going deeper and then uh we got some jwow lined up for you uh that was really great we're gonna keep playing the hits you know that's what we're gonna do here at the vile files uh as always thank you for listening send in those questions at ask nick at the vile uh, be sure to check out all our amazing episodes if you haven't tuned in to them, like the Tom's episode, Gypsy Rose, Clayton Eckhart. The list goes on. I can't even keep track of the bangers we've been dropping. Uh, as always, we appreciate you guys listening. Uh, tell your friends, subscribe. Anything I'm missing, my love? Don't think so. All right. Let's get ready for the one and only Whitney Rose. Manscaped. Well, there's no better time to make sure that the men in your life's balls are groomed. This is, no, you thrive with Manscaped. I mean, what do you want me to say? You know? It's true. I'm only speaking facts. I'm just saying, like, if uh, if, you're, if your man doesn't have Manscaped, he's using your stuff to trim his balls. That's just facts. You know? I'm sorry to break being the bearer of bad news. And they have great technology. You You can just down there they also have the weed whacker which i love using on you the nose trimmer mm. good lord those things just come out and braid it yeah so stop having disgusting men in your life and introduce them to manscaped in addition to all their great technology like the lawnmower 5.0 or the weed whacker uh they have a uh, great deodorant uh underwear just anything that comes to like just making your man you know be less gross honestly if, if you're going to give the gift of generosity on Valentine's Day, make sure you don't have to pluck anything out of your teeth. That's just not, not fair. It's not good for anybody. And with Manscaped, we can make sure that doesn't happen. You get 20% off and free shipping with code V-I-A-L-L at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code V-I-A-L-L. Here's to keeping the romance alive one smooth move at a time. ZOA, you've got to check out ZOA. Dwayne The Rock Johnson's energy drink, Zo Energy, is a better-for-you energy drink with great taste, electrolytes, B and C vitamins, and zero sugar. It's made with caffeine from natural sources to provide balanced energy with no crash. Here at The Vile Files, we've been recording and editing some massive interviews, and my team has loved Zoa to give them an extra boost to get through their days. With ingredients that enhance energy levels, Zoa Energy helps my team find the spark and motivation keeping them focused as they edit through some intense interviews. They've got eight incredible flavors like Tropical Punch, Wild Orange, White Peach, and now Frosted Grape. And my team's favorites are, in fact, Frosted Grape and the Cherry Limeade. So find your spark and order Zoa Energy today. Available online and at a store near you. Find out where you can find it at zoaenergy.com. That's Z-O-A energy.com. And find retailers like Amazon, 7-Eleven, Costco, Circle K, and more. All right. Are we, everyone ready? Ready? You ready? Let's cheers first. Cheers. There we go. Cheers. Thanks for coming. Cheers to my coffee. Yay. Oh. Mm. Whitney. Yes, Nick. Welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Very, it- very excited to have you. Our first Salt Lake City housewife. Your first Salt Lake City housewife? Yeah. Well, I'm glad to be your first. We are as well. I have to say, you probably don't know this, but I was a fan of yours back in the day. Was? Well, Buster. still in. <laughs> well, while, you were, while you were on reality TV. I will become a fan again after okay. I have a bone to pick with you later. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's I usually how it goes with me. Yeah. Um, it's cyclical. Uh, you were a fan. Yeah. I was like, just, were... all I was trying to say is like, I'm having a fangirl moment too. Oh, like okay. I, I watched The Bachelor. Well, let's, Bachelor uh, yeah. Cheers to another being fans of each other. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Are you sad you can't drink, babe? Even though you're not a big drinker. Um, uh, this, I will say I've only ever craved alcohol since being pregnant. So <laughs> I don't know what that says about me. But <laughs> uh, We always start these uh, interviews off with a, a very heavy handed question, which is how is your heart? How is my heart? Yeah. Like how you, I mean, obviously you've been through so much recently. I don't know. How long ago did you film the reunion? We filmed at the end of November. Oh, so it's been a while. Yeah, it was right after BravoCon. Okay, wow. wow. Yeah, they canceled our Salt Lake City panel at BravoCon. Yeah, we uh, heard, heard from yeah, yeah, that's right. I heard yeah, that. Yeah, because it was so close to reunion, and I'm glad we did, because it would have been... Chaotic. I couldn't yeah. imagine having Monica you... Between Monica and Lisa just screaming at each other. Yeah, so my heart... Actually, my heart was a little heavy for a minute, okay. but now I'm feeling very open 
and um, free. Open and free. Yeah. Why open and free? You know, I've, I've just realized that everything we've been through, everything I've been through personally, when my heart feels heavy, it just means I need to ground and go back inward. Okay. And with the chaos of Housewives, Monica, Reunion, the all of it, mm-hmm. I realized I'm still just wit. Yeah. I'm still a human being. And at the end of the day, all these crazy ladies in my life <laughs> really don't affect are, me. Who, who are you closest with? Um, I'm closest with Angie Katsunavis right now. Right. Interesting. Right now. You say yeah. that right now. You're currently in the Do you moment. say right now because it's it's kind of always a revolving door based off of whatever drama is happening? It's because it's Salt Lake City. You never the dynamic shift with the windstorms that come in. Like okay. it is you never know. But you're yeah, it's mostly drama, but she's proven to me that I can trust her. You know, you come on these housewife shows, at least I did, in the beginning as an OG, I thought, oh, these women are really my friends. Some of them I've had long-standing history with. And when you find out, oh, no, they're not my friends. They just want to be icons. Mm. That was hard for my little girl wit heart because I'm like, wait, what happened to our friendship? So Angie has proven that we can be castmates and we can be friends. Interesting. That tracks, too, because Angie, one could argue she might be the most boring of the group. What? (laughs) Angie? (laughs) As a human being, that's a compliment. You know, when it comes to reality TV, I know... But she, yeah, she's more chill, isn't she not? Compared to the rest of the cast? No, she's sniper mouth. I'm with you, Whitney. Yeah, she, she has, is a sniper. She what do the, you mean by she has sniper good mouth? one-liners. Okay, so yeah, but she's usually not like heading up the drama. Okay, facts. So yeah. she's not a potster. Yeah, I guess that's but what I mean. But her words can cut. Like I don't ever want to be cut by her words. Okay. Because I don't think I could have as good of comebacks as she does. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fair. Uh, <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Who yeah. were you closest with before you started filming? Heather Gay. Heather. Yeah, Heather and I actually knew each other for a couple years prior to the show. So are y'all y'all are not actually cousins? Okay, so we are actually third cousins, I think. Okay. So my great grandfather. No, so like, yeah. <laughs> so my great grandfather and her great grandmother were brother and sister. Oh, so okay. I actually knew her. No, her great. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Something like that. Yeah, you sound like Stasi Schroeder, who's like we had we interviewed Gypsy Rose, and she was like, "I'm tenth cousins or something." Or... Yeah, I'm not. No, we, I actually there's high potential that we were at a family reun- reunion at one point in time together. Okay, okay. Yeah. high potential, but I don't know. She grew up in Colorado. Where do you stand now with Heather? Because Heather's been under a lot of fire since the reunion. Oh my God! Yeah, she has. Uh, how do you how do you see it? It's hard for me because I don't know if you remember. If you've watched, I have stood by the fact that I always thought Jen did it. And since the reunion of season three, I said it. I was the only person on the stage that had raised my hand. And watching it back, piecing it all together, I feel like it's hard because Heather did keep this lie from all of us. Like mm-hmm. the the burden of the lie that she that she, the burden she carried from lying about the black eye had to be so heavy and hard. And I empathize with that. So instead of judging her and criticizing her, I'm trying to understand why she made the choice to hide it and lie about it. And knowing what it's like to be under the pressure of a reality TV show, I empathize with that burden. And I'm going to leave it at that. Like, cause every other component involved, every other opinion I don't piece of it. I just I can't imagine what it's like to have to lie to production, lie to the audience, lie to your castmates, and then come out with it later. Like that would be very hard. And that's why I got up and gave her a hug. How I, did you know that it was Jen? What made you suspect? suspect? Yeah. Um <laughs> because it's Jen Shaw. <laughs> okay. Like I there's been many physical altercations that did not make it to air, and they, I was in two of them. So yeah, I just you, you, you yeah. all mentioned the reunion. She seems like her thing was to physically assault. Yeah, people. one time she got out my hot tub while we were filming, and she ran through my house wet as a noodle, and I had to tackle her in my entryway because my kids were home. I'm like, oh. we are not going to make a physical loud scene in front of my kids, like, yeah. not in my home. So I I get you know, like when Heather apologized to the union I get the you know blaming per, like a false accusation of, about production that's fucked up obviously no one likes a liar I I get that so I'm yeah not, but, but I'm wondering why was that 
And just a little background on me, I got into Housewives this season. And when I start any franchise, I just jump in wherever we're at, and then I'll go back and watch. So I'm fully caught up on the current season, seeing a ton of clips of some of your amazing highlights. But why was that black eye such a moment? And why was everyone trying to figure out who did it? I think it's the way that it was presented to us. And yeah, I I agree. Like production are our allies, our partners, and they should never be thrown under the bus like that. But Heather deflects with humor. And that's one of the biggest reasons why she and I have gotten into fights is because I mean, this is not funny. Stop, mm-hmm. like be real with me, mm. like be vulnerable. Don't deflect with humor. It's and like I think, dismissive at times. Yeah, yeah. So I think that she was just throwing out all of these different scenarios to deflect from the truth. And I know that a lot of people are still questioning what the truth is, but based on what I saw when I went to bed that night, they were wild. I I, wa- I witnessed them fall on top of a lounge then into the pool. So I knew it was going to be a rowdy night. Hmm. And had Heather and I not been a, in a bad place, I probably would have joined them. So I'm glad that <laughs> yeah. I went to bed and locked yeah. my door that night. Yeah. <laughs> What would you? Th- what do you think you would have done if you were in that position? Like, is there a real fear of Jen Shaw amongst the group? I think that there was. I think that there still is. And I don't think it's because of physicality or like threats of what Jen can do. I think it's what she knows. Oh, because a lot of, you know, I, for the most part, dun, dun, um, dun. <laughs> like <laughs> watching the final reunion, I was alarmed by how many people were supporting Monica. Fans. Were you? I was. I was. Really? Uh, and despite Heather fucking up, I thought her apology was pretty solid. You know, I'm a big believer. Like, we all are human. We make mistakes. Mm-hmm. You know, you reference mistakes you made. Like, it's how we handle those situations. It's how we respond. Do we, like, take account? Do we, like, try to, like, right our wrongs? And Heather tried to do that. Or Monica. Yeah, Monica. <sighs> like the Lulu. It just. She. All she needed to do was to come to that reunion and apologize, take accountability mm-hmm. and say, I am so sorry and nothing else and say, I did it. I, I trolled you all for four years. I've been stalking you. I've been DMing yeah. you from fake accounts. It's like, I don't stalk. It's like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> There's is- <laughs> video footage of her stalking people. I only drove by there five times. It's like, yeah. what do you call that? And the FBI asked me to. Yeah. <laughs> That's normal. Yeah, normal. Yeah. But yeah, I, no, yeah. Back to Heather though. Like she sat, cause I sat there and it was intense. Like Andy asked her all the heavy hitting questions and she owned it. She had an answer yeah. for everything. And that's how you clear your name. That's how you clear the situation and people can move forward with trust. And But then she went on Watch What Happens Live. And there was an interesting moment that people caught on with. And she said something basically like, I hope Jen saw this basically, which was like, why do you still give a fuck why Jen Shaw approves or doesn't approve of this message. And I'm wondering if you have an opinion as to why she said that and if you still think that Jen Shaw still has a hold over Heather. Well, it's interesting if you consider where Mo- like where Monica came from. She was Jen's assistant, Jen's friend, and then she turned on Jen. So the allyship is definitely not with Monica, but I don't know. I think that I see it from the fans' perspective, but I also think that I see it from Heather's perspective where she's like, Jen, I can speak freely about the truth. I can speak freely about you now, too. But I I see both sides. Like, because a lot, I trust me, my DMs blew up and I haven't been on Instagram in about a week and a half. And I opened it up and I'm like, oh, (laughs) holy, I missed a shit storm. Uh, (laughs) Do you think that Jen still has any type of power over Heather? That's hard one to answer because. Heather seems to be completely different now. Different how? She's no longer placating to Jen. And I, up until halfway through last season, I still felt that. Okay. So there's growth. Yes. Yeah. Lots of growth. And I think that Heather's a new, a new woman. I think she is really learned a lot from this black eye situation. And, you know, now she's Variety's top 40 most powerful women. So. You a little jelly? No, I'm proud of her. Okay. Yeah. I like my sit in the back, stir the pot, collect my why, paycheck. Why was, was Heather the only Salt Lake City housewife on that list? Why was she? No, was she? Oh, I only... don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
for sure. Yeah, well, why do you think she was? Why? Because yeah, she's... Like versus... I mean, hello, look at her. She has a beauty empire. She wrote a book, okay. bestseller, and she the black eyes. receipts. Proof. Time. Time. <laughs> Timelines. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, she. that's well-deserved. Okay. Uh, let's get into the reality of Antis of it all. Do you think production knew at all about Monica? Monica says they did. Mm, yep. But I have a very strong relationship with my producers, and I choose to have trust in them and faith in them and believe them. I realize there's a lot of behind the scenes things that I don't mm. know, but. But it almost sounds like. Okay. Like you want to believe them rather than deep down you do. I mean, until they can prove to me that I can't, I believe them. Okay. I But here's the thing. I don't think they I don't I will, think they knew. I will be honest. I knew I had never met Monica, mm -hmm. never um seen her before, but I had obviously heard about her because Lisa talked about her, Heather talked about her, Angie talked about her. And we just kind of started the season of, okay, I don't know her. I've heard about her, but I don't know her. Were you confused by her casting? Because she doesn't seem to have a housewife pedigree. And to me, I, you know, if I were a housewife, I feel like I would have been like, what are we doing here? Like, what was the sense of the group yes. when you found out that she was casted? So from like a socioeconomical standpoint, yeah, absolutely. But from a willing to put your life out there and quote unquote, share your life story. Who who knows what mm -hmm. that really is now, right? Because I think Linda, her mom was the, like, she's the, she deserves an Emmy. Because I think that the two of them were in cahoots. Do you and deserve I think, an Emmy for just being a bad person and willing and, to show that on TV? No, actress. She, like daytime <laughs> actress. actress, soap operas. <laughs> soap operas. Yes, a soap, um, opera. A soap opera. She, yeah. she, they are a toxic, toxic duo. But she, Great TV. Yeah, so I think that she's brought it, and I think the producer saw that she is willing to do and say whatever. True. Mm -hmm, but yeah, did. but that's see, but I kind of roll my eyes at that from like a fan. It's just like if the only goal is to find crazy people willing to say crazy shit, that's not that hard. Yeah. You know, you know there needs to be well, something more. The problem is, is we all came on. Well, most of us came on as ourselves who we are right i've shared my real life real life stories my vulnerabilities my wins my losses and how nice would it be to come on and just make up a name make up a life and be someone you're not like that mm -hmm. would be amazing yeah i guess you know like that's what monica in my opinion that's what monica did and she studied us for four years so of course the producers felt compelled to pick her because she was studying for four years. Doesn't that give you the ick? It's such yes. an icky feeling. Yes, I literally just bought yeah. a new house. I'm moving. Yeah. <laughs> because of <laughs> Monica? Done. Not because of Monica. W why? Dude, some, some fans are wondering if it's because you're not going to return next season. Well, let's keep them wondering. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, it is not because of Monica, and it's not because of a lack of a return. It's because, one, I can, and I want to. Period. Period. And yeah, two, I... um. <laughs> Yeah, I live in this economy. Pop off, queen. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, really, I love my fans, but my fans, my address, I didn't realize mm. that is public. Is public, okay. and so now I'm moving to a private place, and I, no one's gonna know where I live. And my kids deserve that. Put your it, house in a trust. Yes, exactly. It's already done. Like we're no one's. Um, we're gonna film a dummy house where no one's gonna know where I live, and I hope that everyone respects that out of the privacy for my children. I hope they do. Be what have you learned about like yeah, like what it means to be a housewife? What have you learned about how to protect yourself and your family while still being able to be a housewife? So I hate to say it because it's like being a housewife that tells the truth and sharing your real life what's really going on, opening up your heart and soul and vulnerabilities to the process. What I've learned is that you have to have a filter at some point in time. There has to be a yes and a no and a, like what you're willing to compromise and what you're willing not to. I've had to learn that because I've always lived my life freely. I've never filtered myself. I've never stopped to think about what I'm about to do or say. And being a housewife, I've learned it's not just about me anymore. It's about my husband, my children, my mom, my siblings. And that was hard. So, yeah, I want to be doing Love is Art and all these things, but 
there's consequences. Yeah, for sure. So it's hard. It's a hard balance because I don't want to lie and I don't want to portray something that I'm not because I'm messy and I love it and I'm I love hard. I learn hard. I fall hard, but I don't know how to do that without being me. And there's I'm trying to teach my kids that it's okay. But they go so at school the hardest thing is the school kids will pull up photos from the internet and like talk to my kids about stuff and they'll find pictures from my Instagram from years ago and you know pictures that maybe the kids don't love of themselves so I've kind of stopped posting my kids as sad as it is I don't really share much about them on Instagram uh, well as expecting parents I I get it yeah is, and I you know it's gonna it's tough because. I think we're gonna want to like obviously share because yeah, we're so want, proud yeah, and we're so excited and, yeah. but like ugh, like people are fucking weird and mm-hmm. i also don't want my kids to become weird you know have you give you given thought about that about like how aware they are of you on tv or them on tv yes so when they when i started they were nine and six okay. now they're 13 and 11 and we've just had to really be open and honest with them we've had to kind of maybe push them on what normal kids that don't grow up on reality tv we've had to push further so they're probably living a little bit beyond their years which is sad but at the same time they're going up faster and now in the past i used to explain things now they just tell me straight up they'll be like mom what the like don't ever do or say that again don't mom that is cringy mom stop <laughs> like mom i'm so proud of you like one time um we have this we have a theater in our basement and justin and i watch we get the link like a couple days early sure. right and justin and i were down there watching and I'm like you guys can't come down for this episode because i just knew that i was it was the you exploited my vagina oh, oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes yes that's a tough watch for the kids yeah, yeah. so i um asked them please don't come downstairs. Lo and behold, they're sitting on the stairs with popcorn, like watching around the corner. And I thought, oh no, they're going to like, that's so cringy. But my daughter said to me, she goes, mom, I'm so proud of you for finally standing up for yourself. I couldn't take one more time of you in a fight that you don't say something. And I was like, okay, okay, Bobby. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I mean, you're going to be on next season, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't know if we're officially announced. I think it's pretty much if been announced on social media without so if know. there is a season you have every intention of being on it if they want you exactly okay all right good and as, assuming that happens do you have a goal of like what kind of whitney you're going to bring to the show yeah so there's so many sides of me that haven't been seen like i have two businesses i have a podcast i am what's it called wild rose podcast okay subscribe um everyone well yeah i'm gonna after this i'm pausing for i'm I'm gonna release seasons (laughs) well subscribe and then when she comes back she'll she'll be ready to go (laughs) no everyone's everyone's been questioning i'm like it's still here i promise it's coming back um i have add so bad don't worry what did you ask me oh what kind of whitney are we oh we're gonna see the side of whitney that always seems to hit the editing floor i'm strong I do stand up for myself. I do advocate for myself. And I'm going to stop being nice. Just to, like even that's going to go against my core and it's going to be so hard. But I, if I have to be relentless in the pursuit of getting my strength out and my point of view, then I'm going to do it. Okay. And it's going to be hard for me because I lend to just being chill, easy, forgiving, but not this season. Because I, I know what I'm up against. I mean, you have it going into it. You know what's coming for you. Okay. You um followed Monica back after the reunion on Instagram. I did. Well, that's I what thought I, was, I unfollowed what her. We heard, what we, we heard. heard. I you, never stopped. Meredith and no, I never stopped following her. So but, you might have been what it was. Yeah. Okay. I never stopped following her. I unfollowed her this last week. Oh. So you don't follow her now. I don't now. Did you see all of the? Burn book photo shoot, the reality Von Teese photo shoot. How did you feel about her really just leaning in? in? That's what made me unfollow. Yeah. Even though I realize she probably has many troll accounts that are still following me. <laughs> it just, yeah. you know, th- there's some kind of gratification of unfollowing and blocking someone like face to face, right? But I just, there's no, she's, she doesn't feel bad. Mm-mm. 
There's, she's not. Did you go into that reunion willing to give her an opportunity to remain on the cast? Not that it was your decision to fire her, but were you open? I'm always open. If someone's willing to take accountability and I was willing to hear her out, but really it's in the action that follows. So someone can say, I'm sorry. But then if they show up the same the next day, the next week, the next month, then yeah, goodbye. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the fact that she couldn't even sit there and say anything anything at all. like (laughs) Yeah. I will say she did go on the record and she explained why she didn't give an apology. In an interview, she said, the reason why I did not apologize is because I'm not going to give a fake apology. I want to get to a place where I can actually sit down and have a civil conversation. What does that mean, though? So she was saying that she didn't have the chance because everybody was talking over her. But that's implying that sh- they, the women, owe her something before she's ready to apologize. Yeah. And I don't understand why. I don't, I don't, that annoys me. I can't imagine how it makes you <laughs> yeah. feel. Yeah, I mean, hence the unfollow. But what's interesting is there's been something that keeps, I keep getting tagged in over and over and over again. And it's someone saying that if you know, does anyone notice that Whenever Monica tried to speak to other women, they would just get into a screaming match, but her and Whitney would actually communicate without yelling. And I know a lot of fans are mad at me, actually, because they were hoping that I would hear her out and have a conversation with her, which I did. And if you go back and rewatch it, she and I had a conversation. Just It was lost in translation because Lisa Barlow wouldn't stop yelling yeah, from the know. side. Yeah. So Monica, I asked her a simple question and she answered it. And that's when I told her, I said, then you lost me. What was the question? I wasn't just upset about Reality Von Tees because that's an account. I was upset by all of the text messages and um, conversations she had with Tanisha that Tanisha shared with us. So it's while we are filming, uh, the four years prior and while we're filming, behind my back what she was saying about me versus what she was saying to my face. And I was I was the first one to receive her. Like yeah, I was open to her. Yeah. I So it was hard. So... But that's that's Monica's fault because, yeah, I would have been open to having a conversation and we did. And it was missed because of the yapper on the side. She could not shut up. Someone needs to give uh, like duct tape needs to be involved. I wouldn't reunion. even do it. It's just it's so I feel like all the other reunions, maybe they just know how to argue like all the other franchises mm-hmm. of Housewives. But Lisa and Monica and There's really Heather. Lisa and I, Monica. Mostly. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it was just really. Right? Truly you were just, there. Yeah. yeah listen. I know Lisa says she's from New York, but she's lived in Utah most of her life. And uh, women. That's what she says. That's her excuse. <laughs> no, no, no. I was born I, in New York. I, yeah. I'm, it was, she's like, I can't shut up. I was born in New York. <laughs> you know that this is going to come up week one of filming. Um, yeah, she's a New Yorker. But um, that makes her so much different mm-hmm. than us. That means yelling's okay is Obviously. how I interpret that. The difference between Salt Lake and other franchises, I think, is we did grow up under this like suppression of women don't speak up. It's not really until my generation that women have started really advocating for themselves, standing up for themselves, having opinions, saying, no, the man's not in charge. So I think that I'm not the same generation as everyone. Please don't get mad at me. <laughs> but I am a different generation. It's not your fault to than speak my facts. Cast. I don't, yeah, like... than my castmates. <laughs> and I just think that, yeah, it's it's a generational thing. I think they don't know how to like really just... Communi- I think everyone's learning rapidly, but women in Utah historically don't have a voice. Yeah. Hmm. It's our culture. Interesting. It's changed a lot. But- Has Lisa, um, Lisa really came at Meredith for being the gossip queen and accusing Meredith of spreading all these rumors and it was, you shut the fuck up, apologize, <laughs> you, you know, you did all this. <laughs> yeah. Turns out it was Monica. Well... You can't have a one-way conversation. What do you mean? There was DM sent back and forth. There's conversation sent back and forth all season long. If you remember the beginning of the season, I was up Meredith's ass. I'm like, Meredith, stop doing this. You've done it every season. Mm-hmm. She did it to Lisa the season three, Jen season two. Like, So she is it, a guilty. It, she did Heather yes, season three. Yeah, yeah. There, I mean, this is Meredith's, this is her equation. All you have to do is delete name and insert next like (sighs) Meredith has a formula and I love her like I love her for it because she's so in denial about it that she can't see it it is have I will dig up because she's a law like she's an attorney I don't think she practices but she went to law school really yeah so she loves documents she loves files she maybe got to get her on here (laughs) 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 um 
She loves documents. She loves facts, proof, timeline, <laughs> yeah, all the all things. So where do you think Heather got all the information? Where do you think everyone gets all of their information? Meredith digs it up and gives it to someone else to bring it on camera. That way she can say, I never said it. Because in the reality TV world, all you're accountable for is who said it on camera. Because so everyone can, can be back. bitches behind each other's yeah. backs and talk about it. Are you? But who's the one that brings it on camera? Because they're the one held accountable. Are you suggesting that Meredith had, a, Meredith had a role in helping Heather find out who uh, Reality Von Teese was? I don't know that. But I do know that you don't know Meredith not- has brought a lot of documents. Remember the SEC filing against Lisa? I actively engaged in a pursuit to take Lisa down with Meredith in season three. And I backed out because I realized what I was doing and it didn't align with my core. Mm. So I know the game and I know how Meredith plays it. And it's very respectful because she keeps her hands clean. But also I think that she learned a big lesson this season and I doubt she shows up the same next season. Mm. If she does, then bring me back on because I will (laughs) let loose. (laughs) Okay. But so I, you're willing I think, to give her some grace because yeah, you think, think she learned a lesson. Had reality Von Teese not come out, it would have been a whodunit of Monica and Meredith. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. did the egg come before the chicken or the chicken before the egg? Yeah. From Meredith's side, it makes sense. Like, we, this DM of documents was everything you told me on this airplane. And then, yes. and like, Monica is the one with a troll account mm-hmm. and DMing people. So, like, we can't put it past Monica that she would make another troll account to send a DM. Yeah. I mean, so it all, it all adds up. It could up. really be both of them. Uh-huh. And there was actually a moment at a pray ski early in the season when the rumor came out about Angie, the alleged rumor about Angie's husband. Mm-hmm. Sure. Meredith, when Angie is chasing Meredith, Meredith turns around to Heather and goes, aren't you going to share the documents? <laughs> <laughs> and Heather's like, what, the DMs? <laughs> that's, so a, that's a pretty a, good good Meredith impression. Yeah, she does I, the... yeah, I love, and I, you know, I hope Meredith receives this kindly. I mean, I mean yeah, I, did you finally recover from saying it's gross that she takes baths with her husband? <laughs> I mean, I hope so. <laughs> But you think it's gross she takes bath with, with her husband? It wasn't even about the bath. People miss the shade so hard there. <laughs> but was I, sh- was, I was shading, shading the fact up. that she doesn't own a home in Salt Lake City and she rents Airbnbs every season. People missed it. I was like, I don't know what vacation rental live? you're staying in. People really miss the shade there. And it was yeah, good shade. That was good where, shade. Where does Meredith live? Well, I don't give her, don't give her address. I, ha- I have no idea. Oh. I, I have no idea where where they call home where their permanent residence is or she travels all around <laughs> and nomad. Yeah. Is it really is it, <laughs> that's so her, wait, you that's all an expensive don't know, lifestyle. You I all mean, don't know where each other resides. You don't go to Oh wait, I know where Okay. If I know where people if you are a resident in Utah, I know where you live. And it's there's no shame in renting a house. Like Meredith Meredith's lifestyle is probably way more expensive than a mortgage. It's just interesting. How accurate or inaccurate are you housewives a reflection of Salt Lake City. Like, because Beverly has housewives. Hey, it's Beverly Hills. Yeah. You know, everyone's a bit disconnected. Where do you all stand within the community? We do not re- represent the mass majority okay. of Salt Lake City. How are you received by the community? For the most part, well. The, you know, the community of active LDS really don't like us because it's a misrepresentation of the church in their eyes. And the women, and I agree, like most women in Salt Lake are driving a minivan with five kids, not working, like devout their life to their family. Devout? Uh, devout. Yeah. Devout. devout. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah same thing. You yeah. know, I'm not, I have always messed up my words. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there is this little pocket of people in Salt Lake that it is way more crazy than what you've even seen. Like there's... Utah has a lot of little subcultures. Because it's almost, I mean, I I grew up very Catholic, so I'm familiar with religion. The downside of super religious people is that sometimes it's so devout and so hardcore that people almost create these like secret societies Mm -hmm. because, you know, they can't possibly just say, this is who I am and I need you to accept me because they won't be accepted. So they just kind of, live in this kind of underworld of of stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's very Utah, but I will I do have to stand up for a lot of like 
a lot of the LDS people in Utah love the show too. I think it's put Utah on the map. Like everyone, I always said in the beginning, Utah's the best kept secret. You know, season one, when they ask you like, what, what can we expect? I'm like, Utah is a gem and it's the best kept secret. And now I'm like, the secret's out. Everyone stop moving to Utah. <laughs> stop. <laughs> like, it's, a great, it's a great place. Yeah. yeah. So I think that overall y- Utah loves us, but there's definitely a few that are not loving it's, it's, what we're I bringing. I find it fascinating because uh, a lot of you, uh, you, Heather, Monica, have a very complicated relationship with the church, which I think, based off what I've learned about you guys, is putting it nicely. But you all seem to have still respect for it. You're willing to give credit if credit is due. Like you and Heather have a, like almost, you don't have like a hatred for a community that many of which treated you all very poorly at times. Yeah, well, my ancestors on both sides of my family built Utah. They were Mormon pioneers. And literally, Utah was built by the hands of my ancestors. So cool. I respect yeah. that legacy. Yeah. My grandfather passed and his funeral was on Monday. And I'm sorry. it was, well, thank you. And it was beautiful, though, to sit there and listen and be reminded of the legacy of my family. And you know, I, I'm an entrepreneur. I've always worked very hard and yeah, I'm not LDS. I removed my name from the church. I didn't just stop going. Like I am no longer a member, but I am so proud of my heritage. I think there's respect in picking up your home, putting it in a hand cart and going across the United States out of your faith and belief. Yeah. And they persevered and they made it here. And my middle name is Joanna. And the woman that I'm named after died coming across the plains during childbirth so oh there's gosh. actually a, a monument for her in winter quarters so it's cool i've done the whole like i went all the way up to palmyra new york where joseph smith was born and i've done the whole tour all the way back to utah oh when i was 18 and then that same night i came home and had a beer for the first time how'd that feel it was really <laughs> confusing <laughs> <laughs> um going into this show mm-hmm. you obviously knew you were going to have to air your life your secrets one of them obviously being that you had an affair with your boss that you yeah, ended that up was marrying hot. <laughs> that was hot <laughs> obviously your children are going to watch that back so did you have that conversation with them do they know did they find out from the show how did that kind of happen in your family? Well, you know, I have three older stepsons, right? And are, my, and are you their step grand? Like, okay, grand- so I'm a grandma. <laughs> You're a yeah, grandma. I'm a You're grandma. grandma. Okay. Yeah, I'm a grandma through okay. marriage. Wow. And I claim them. I love Jimmy and Henry so much. Um, so my oldest stepson is five years younger than me. We went to college together oh. and we shared a moped. He'd watch my daughter in the morning and then I would come home from school and then he'd go to school (laughs) so yeah we're very open I think that when you I'm I don't condone cheating I don't think that it's something to be proud of but it's how I met my husband it's the truth so you have to figure out a way to own it and it's my story so either I tell it or everyone else does yeah yeah that was a hard conversation because when we started the show my kids were too young Right, to like, to like understand. grasp, yeah, understand. Yeah. But now we've had whole conversations. I think the point I was trying to make is my stepkids obviously already knew. Okay. Because they, they, were, they were old enough to understand what was happening in the moment. Because it's like you have to beat the other kids at school who have families yeah, and watch it. and you know show. That yeah. your mom. <laughs> yeah. You have to beat them, but also still wait until they're old enough to understand or grasp. So I can see how that this would be is, hard. This so- is... I can't wait until you experience this with your daughter. When we had to have the conversation after season two of love is art, that was a hard one with the kids. Yeah. My daughter, we, we prepped them for, um, we did like a, what is it called? Like a role play where we're Mm -hmm. asking them questions, like possibly what kids might ask at school. Yeah. And my daughter straight up goes, yeah, that's my mom. Are you jealous? Oh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> love so i can't wait for you to experience yes. this with your daughter of that bond of like protecting, you know yeah. you're embarrassing me but i love you and yeah. i'm gonna protect you <laughs> i can't I wait yeah like having a daughter is very cool what, especially as your wait. first born yeah. what did you have to learn because like it is you know again we always we make mistakes we learn from them yours is complicated because you married 
you, you made a mistake, but yet it, it led to love and mm -hmm. children. So what were you still able to learn from that mistake, even though it still brought you so much joy? Um, to not be so hard on myself and to forgive myself, because obviously this is my life path. And there was, a, you know, I'm still figuring out what the lessons were, but I wasn't supposed to walk the path that, you know, my siblings did. Like I met Justin at a point in time that it was hard to get together, but here we are 14 years, married 16 together, two kids, I have three stepkids, two grandkids, and do they call you grandma? They call me Mama Wit. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I, I keep asking them to, but they're like, Ugh. you're weird. <laughs> um, you're like, it's a kink. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> just like being like, I guess it's just giving yourself, being kind to yourself and honoring that your path might not look like everyone else's. But as long as you're moving forward, you're in the right direction. When did you first find out that Monica was reality of Antis. Was it in fact on the beach when Heather told you? For me, it was on the beach in the moment. How hard was it for you to go to that dinner? Because it was like this whole, you know, you like all found out. Like pick a fight with Lisa about something. Yeah, <laughs> like you were like... so chill. Like how, how did you not just like storm into Monica's? Uh... Because we made a pact on that beach when we found out that like, okay, we're like, we may all have our differences and fight time to time, not agree, but we're a sisterhood. That moment was so hard, but it bonded us on a level that we've never bonded on before. And so we knew that to get to call Monica out, like, yeah, we still had a whole dinner to go through. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud of everyone. I mean, the fact that Lisa could wait two hours, that was impressive. <laughs> yeah, truly. <laughs> and truly. you guys made iconic television. Yeah, and it was, I have to say, that was no production involved at all. That was just us trying to figure out. We're all making eye contact, and poor Angie had no idea what was going on. That's right. Yeah, yeah. She, was there. She, was... <laughs> she deserved to be in the inner circle, but at you know, that point in time, it, it made sense that it was just the OGs. The OGs, yeah. 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 Okay. And for all the fans out there who are like, well, Heather fucked up too, and yeah, Monica fucked up, but why is she, you know, getting fired for this, what would you say to them? Because Monica used us to get here. Yeah. I, as someone who's been on reality TV, I mean, when that went down, I knew, I like, I knew how y'all felt. Like, I was like, this is so fucked, like beyond belief. Mm -hmm. And again, this is not to say that what Monica did is the, is murdering children as Monica well, I'd like to point out that that apparently is the only way you could be a bad person. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> that said a lot about yeah. Monica. I mean, it revealed a lot, honestly. Yeah, honestly. Like that was the, I was like, oh, it all kind of made sense. Mm -hmm. That's your floor. That's, yep. and as long as you're above that, you think and you're fine. And that makes her dangerous. Mm -hmm. because so dangerous. there is a, you know, we come after each other for everything, but there is a level of respect and it may not seem like it because the fights do get pretty below the belt sometimes. But Monica doesn't have that. Like you said, like her floor is the basement of like negative 13 floors. Yeah. And it's like, you know, on Bachelor World, right? Like there are plenty of people who come on the show who get casted that you meet and like they were fans of the franchise before they got casted. And that, that's totally, that's totally fine. fine. That's totally fine. Yeah, you were a fan, whatever. I was a fan when I... But what Monica is or what she conveys is goes way beyond fan it goes to levels of obsession mm -hmm. and unhealthy behavior she brought out the burn book and made it seem like you all were gonna like laugh i think that she thought the burn book was gonna be this big hit mm -hmm. especially with the fans i don't think she really cared about us she put a lot I of effort think, into it i think it was all about the fans i think she knew that Mean Girls was coming out. And I think that she honestly yeah. played into that. And I think that was smart from whatever line of thinking, wherever she pulled that from. Yeah, I get what you're I, saying. Like, I can track where she thought. She, and it had yeah. nothing to do with us. It was not about us giving her like forgiveness. It was about the fans making her iconic. And she was like, oh, I'll just make fun of myself. But it fell and it'll flat be all okay. on her face. Oh my God, it was so weird. When I will never forget when she pulled it out and Andy looked over. And he looks at all of us and we're all looking at each other like, oh my God, no. Like, what are you doing? It was so weird. Yeah, it was the biggest mess of all time, I think. 
But I saw my pages in the burn book and mine weren't bad. Reality Von Teese didn't come after me very much. It was more behind the scenes of post this about Whitney and see what people say. And then there was other accounts in question that tied to Reality Von Teese that were much worse. And one of them did come after me and my family pretty hard. And so I assume it is her. Okay. I have to. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, can you explain what was in the burn book? Because from it, like a viewer standpoint, it, really, it, looks, yeah. it looks like she just brought it out and then they just like kind of moved on. But you obviously saw what was in it. Yeah, she like specifically showed me my page. And then one of my makeup artists that I work with in Salt Lake City works with her as well. And he stopped photos of my page and was like, can you like trying to get me to, you know, see her side of it, whatever. And so really it was in the beginning poking fun at herself, saying that, you know, she she was trying to victimize herself in a way. And then at the end was all of the receipts of the reality Von Tees page. And I don't know why she thinks that us re reading, like we already have, we already have it. We already know, like we were tagged in it we thousands no, and thousands of I think what she was trying times. to do, why she led with herself, she was basically saying, I can laugh at myself, but you all can't. can't. And yeah. this isn't a big deal. Regina George. You know, and it's like, that's not what that yeah. is. This is you being creepy okay, and that's, weird. Yeah. And this is our real life. Like, Everything in that book that they were posting about are our husbands, our children, our businesses. Mm-hmm. Like that's, you don't mess around with that. Yeah. And then, and that's the thing. It's just like, and I, this is, when I say fan, I like, I, we're so appreciative of the people listening to the show and the fans yeah. of all these franchises, but there are certain people who don't respect boundaries, who don't see us as human beings. They see us as characters on a show. And just think that we're just so completely fair game. And clearly that's how Monica saw you all. Mm -hmm. They didn't see you as human beings. She saw you as entities to fuck with. And as long as she was willing to do the same, she didn't see the difference. So I think that's beautifully said. So what character do you think she was stepping into? Jen Shaw's. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The villain. Mm -hmm. It's almost like she was a, what is it called? Like a trope of like every major villain on Housewives. Trope, yeah. A trope? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. A trope? Yeah. I would say the wrong thing. <laughs> hey, listen, I have a big education, so I. but I, always, I am from Utah. I, I, I grew up on a farm. I say the wrong words all the fucking time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Apparently I have an accent that I wasn't even aware about. <laughs> aware of. Yeah, that everyone apparently yeah. can do so well. Yeah. Yours? <laughs> they did it at the reunion and it honestly was, I mean, none of it I will tracked. Monica's, Monica's Lisa, of Lisa was is great. Iconic. It's mm-hmm. because that she was... has been working on it for four years. So also, but, and yeah. she's also right. It's not that hard. I can't do impressions and I feel like I could maybe do a Lisa. Oh, oh. It's just kind of, oh. <laughs> she is. She does have a very deep voice. Oh, what is your saw... relationship with Lisa currently at this moment? Have you time? ever heard Lisa apologize? Mm. Without being dismissive. I'm sorry, whatever. You know, not, not that, like a genuine As, a apology. A sincere apology without a but, and, if, or. Yeah, without any type of. I can't say that I have. Yeah, she doesn't strike me as someone who. So TBD of our current relationship, because mm. my thing with Lisa, and you know, I have to play my cards right, because we are headed into season five, so I have to be careful. You've got time for them to forget. Oh, girl, <laughs> she's going to put this on her phone and show up in scene and be like, <laughs> at. What day is it? The 20, whatever. At this time, that. <laughs> what, I mean, but, but, why live in fear? Who gives a shit? Like, it's just. Because she plots and she'll strategize. And I am just trying to play. My, if this is Housewives 101. You play, you keep your cards close to your chest. But I will say this. The, where Lisa, she's upset with me over something. And it's just the fact that I called her out for making everything about herself, which she does. And. How's that not obvious to her? Yeah. But it's not like I'm like. I was just trying to have a conversation with her and she's so mad at me because she thinks I said that she didn't reach out when my best friend died. And all she cares about is that I said, yeah, you didn't. And you make everything about yourself. And instead of understanding someone's feelings and perspective, like all she needed to say is, I'm sorry, I hurt your feelings. And I would have said, thank you. And instead, she has to prove that she is right. Well, she's, she, mm-hmm. she she's, doesn't care about anything else other than being right, and she, she her it's hard to be her friend because sharing your character. feelings, yeah, and like, yeah. but even just sharing your feelings or your perspective, you are wrong, and so I'm just done trying to be in a friendship that isn't a two way street. Yeah, it's always frustrating. Someone's like, "Well, it's how I feel." It's like, 
no, yeah, I get it. And you're entitled to your feelings, but I may feel differently and your feelings aren't more important than mine. Yeah. And I lived in San Francisco for six years and going down those one way roads got exhausting and confusing. So I am not doing that anymore. Uh, <laughs> I can't tell you how many yeah. times I went down the wrong way. <laughs> true. I, um, until you learn your lesson, I'm not yeah. doing it anymore. You know, it's true. That's I'm true. no longer going down a one way road. I'll take a fucking highway over a one way road. A lot of people are concerned, despite Monica's character, uh, that she was excellent television mm-hmm. and that um, this next season will suffer from her not being a part of it. Uh, what would you say to that? People were concerned when Mary didn't come back. People were concerned when Jen didn't come back. And look at us now. Every season gets better and better and better. I promise you, Salt Lake City, it is, it is a gem. Okay. People don't need to be concerned. Are you expecting them to cast her replacement or go with what we have? Nick, we already have her replacement. She's been here for four years. Am I missing it? Who? Mary? No, I guess it's not her replacement. We already have that person. Who is it? You? Uh, Me? Lisa Barlow. Oh. (laughs) Oh. Being the next villain. Villain. Lisa's always been the villain. <laughs> but she no, was. To me, she I, was... You know, Lisa, if you're listening to this, I've never met you, so no offense. But like, I kind of can't I, stand her you're on the show. You're an iconic villain, Lisa, okay? Yeah. You are the Salt Lake icon. Shh. She really is. So at like BravoCon and stuff, she's always on the icon panel. So like, she's she represents Salt Lake City. Yeah, but she's kind of insufferable. It's fine. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> like, but yeah. the whole makeup thing, come on. Can you, but no, go... I actually, I kind of, I know a little bit about that. And I, yeah, it's going to be, I don't think we need a Monica because we have enough personalities as it is. So you're not expecting them to cast someone new? I mean, we always bring on friends. Okay. Are there any friends you want to bring back? Or like if you had the choice, would you bring anybody back? Yeah, I always thought Dana, but now she's friends with Monica. I saw that, yeah. So, <laughs> but she's still my friend. I don't know. But you have a mutual who's friends with Monica. Mm-hmm. Do you are are there people in your community that are siding with Monica or trying to get you all to forgive Monica? Not anymore. Andy Cohen, following the reunion on his radio show, didn't put like a nail in the coffin, so to speak, when it came to Monica. It, he kind of referenced it as a more of a cooling off period. And maybe Monica won't be on next season, but like seemed to let things open ended going forward. How did that make you feel? Uneasy. Okay. Yeah, very uneasy because I mean, there's so much going on in the Bravo world right now and in reality TV, where I think the stakes are higher of people like myself who are on TV are like, enough is enough. Like, we're not going to take this. Like, So I think Bravo, I don't know what they're thinking. I haven't really had a full conversation with them yet, but I'm glad to Mm. see that they made the decision they made. Okay, yeah. Because that means that they really do care about us. And did you all go to Bravo uh, kind of as a united front to say it's us or her? No, we never went as like a united front ever. I think that we all had our private concerns. I mean... But it was never a us or her thing ever. Like, that's not how it works. We could be delusional enough to think that we, sure. like, that's not how it works. So. Yeah, and that, for anyone who's still struggling, <laughs> and, and yeah. again, I'm, I'm as sad as anyone to not get the drama that Monica brought, but, like, Monica admitted to, like, putting a camera in Jen Shaw's house and watching it. That's so fucked. It's so fucked. It's beyond. It's beyond beyond. fucked. (laughs) It's beyond. And then would slip up and like say conversations she heard as if someone told her. How would you? Like the whole Snoop Dogg thing. Uh It's like Lisa and that must have been a creepy feeling when Lisa finally put that together where she's like, I never told you that. And then when she found out like all this stuff came to light, I can't imagine Lisa being like. (gasps) It's because she was in the car with Jen when Lisa was at the airport. So I... It, I got the backstory to that, and it is so creepy. Can you share? Yeah, no, Monica was in Jen's car, oh, that's and true, okay. Lisa and Jen were on a phone call, and something about Snoop, and a, I don't... Weird. Yeah, but the fact that Monica was listening to the conversation, <sighs> and, and then, like, used Yeah, it. and used it as if, yeah, because, yeah. Did she steal from Meredith's store? She was a part of that group that stole the clutches, that for sure. Stole, yeah. Yeah, that's she the was the blonde in the mask. Mm-hmm. Monica's a criminal. Yeah, she has a criminal history, a <laughs> yeah. criminal record. 
Yeah. But it's like, you know, I don't even mean that. Like, sure. Yeah. That too. But like, it's her actions are one of a criminal. Like she is a con artist. She maneuvers. And, you know, was it Lisa? It might've been Lisa. I'm not, it was either her or Lisa, her or Heather rather, that like kind of said, this is why we feel the way we do. Because when you put it all together from the time in which she started working for Jen, she like, it is such a creepy storyline. I mean, impressive maybe, I guess, but like, it's so Machiavellian in nature mm -hmm. that it's such an, it's such an ick. Do you think it's just fans who just want the drama and they're just like selfishly don't want to lose Monica that like, I, I, I really am on, almost frustrated with the fans that, and I see it online that are mad that Monica's gone. Yeah, no, I, again, I, I do see the fans' perspectives. They don't get it. They don't get what's at stake for the rest of us and what that feels like for us. For fans, they're just checking out and watching the show. And Monica brought the entertainment. She brought, like, she brought a lot of entertaining things, but... And also, you could probably, I'm guessing that the show knew how the season played out. And that's part of the reason why Monica was probably such a feature and such a focus. She's the star. Because, well, they probably anticipated this being a one and done situation. So, you know, they could have edited it differently, but they used what they had because mm -hmm. this season really was about reality of Antis. So it, they had to show Monica. Yeah. Like she had to be the star. And when you're dealing with someone of this nature, you talked about Machiavelli because Catholic upbringing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went to a Catholic college. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. Um, it, like, let's go back to Moses in the Bible, eye for an eye, troll for a troll. Like, that's when you're, when you're dealing with someone like Monica, you have to go back to those basic universal principles. Yeah. Because otherwise, this opens up the gate for anyone to come in any, and anyone to wreck your life. And the, I've, Jen was bad, but Jen was casted as an OG. Like, they found Jen. Monica. The, that voice recording of her saying, Kim K's assistant. Uh -huh. I remember that. Kim or, K was yeah. Paris Hilton's yeah. assistant. assistant. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And look I, at her now. I like, to be honest with you, I had a fast word through my own reunion. Well, it's, it's, it's really crazy, the psychology yeah. of it. Because you think about like her mom. I and mean, when she told that story, which was sad, when Monica told the story about, you know, her mom abandoning her and going to New York to be a star, like I kind of, I get why Monica is the way she is because she's just competing with her mom. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, she yeah. got abandoned by her mom. Her mom went to be an actress. And instead of her mom being getting her to her dreams, Monica's I'm going to do what you couldn't do. And I, mm -hmm. I think just that motive, I think that's all that's, that is who she is at her and core. It's so sad. Cause Linda came back and tried to discredit Monica. Like Linda was active on Twitter while the episodes were airing. Oh, yeah. It was, it it's, was it's, nasty. And a Greek Easter at Angie's house. I remember sitting there, Linda was sitting with the guys and she was like, okay, hey, let's talk about sports. Like she was just trying to fit in. And I remember the guys when she got up and left, we were all like, she wants to be a housewife so bad. Give Linda the snowflake. Like she was uh, trying really? to take it from Monica. And I, you know, I feel bad for Monica because I know what it's like to grow up in dysfunction. And that's where she really got me. I mean, like I woke up like in bed with her the morning of the when we found out the reality of Antis was coming out because I was out on the beach. I, that trip was hard because I lost my best friend like a couple days before and I had to go to Bermuda. And I was just having a moment out on the beach and finally producers were like, you have to come in. This is a safety issue. I'm like, just leave me alone. I'm mourning. And Monica was great to me. Like she was there for me. And so to wake up in bed with the enemy the next day, I was just like, how big of an actress are you? And then like, now that I have that perspective, looking back on it, I'm like, were you and your mom? I don't want to discredit her lived in experience that she claims, but now I don't believe anything. That's what I said. Like, I don't believe anything anymore because yeah. my dad and I have been estranged for two years now. In fact, my aunt called me on the way here to give me an update on my father and like when things are that bad and you really do want to change, like you change them. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing. And, and I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to discredit anyone who hasn't stepped outside of their abusive situation yet or their dysfunctional situation because that takes, that everyone's on their own path and some people never get out of it in this lifetime. But it's still not an excuse. That doesn't give any adult 
an excuse to use that trauma that they experienced to traumatize others. Yes. And I was told that Monica said to someone that if she uses the abuse dysfunction card, she can get in with me. And that's when I was like, okay, if she's not going to take accountability for anything, then. So I just wish Monica so the best. Scary. And I hope that whatever is in her future, I hope that she changes for her daughters because I've met them. I know them. I've spent time with them. Well, we have all seen how her mom treats her. Yes. Do you, have you seen parallels with Monica and her children? No, I have not. Actually, I've That's seen the opposite. Okay. I've seen, good for her. I've seen a very confusing, it was always so confusing for me to like rationalize who is Monica because yeah. the mom I saw was very like kind, gentle, loving, and then action. Yeah. And then. But uh, that's, I mean, I, that, I'm really happy to hear that. Yeah. Um, that she is at least not doing that with her children. I mean, I haven't from, from what been around see. them since yeah. we wrapped, so I don't know. What do, you, what do you think her next move is? Because she will make one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just hope it's not us. <laughs> You're out of the line of fire. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, don't, I feel like she's a great actress, so maybe she should go, like, do some training and get on some daytime TV. I don't know. Yeah, she might have burned that bridge. Uh, <laughs> maybe Bravo will find another spot for her. Yeah, maybe. House of Villains. There's always that. A little what plug. is that? Oh, it's a, it's a, a show that- show with all the villains. All, all the villains. Oh, House Whatever. of Villains. Yeah. yeah. I haven't watched it yet. I haven't seen it, but people like it. Yeah. I know everyone's raving it about the traitors. Right traitors, now. yeah. We're big yeah. fans of traitors. Yeah, we, uh, we've it's been really covering good. it on Reality Recap. Little plug, yeah. Would you go on Traders? Do you think I'd be good on Traders? You're a housewife, so I think there's a natural skill set that you have developed. Poker face, yeah. And you, you'll probably have alliances. Seems like they don't. They yeah, don't... and my biggest weapon is I'm smarter than people give me credit for. Yeah, you. And my voice is high, and my yeah, size you, is small, but that's my biggest that, weapon. You could squeak that yeah. voice a little bit, dye that hair a little bit more blonde. You know, I know. Really We're in my in, natural. Yeah. I took out the extensions and chopped my hair, so I have my natural hair right now. I'm like, what is happening? Uh, I haven't seen my natural hair color in it years. It looks great. That's your natural color. I mean, I have a few little highlights. But yeah, this is Love. my natural. Yeah, Love. it's gotten pretty dark. Welcome to the dark side. Looks great. Um, I'm kind of liking it. It's kind of fun. I need a spray tan. It's kind of fun. No, you don't. You what are you great. more likely to do? Uh, traitors or special forces? Are you familiar with special forces? I mean, only because of Scandaval. I haven't watched it, okay. but I saw that Tom Did you follow there. Scandaval? Of course I did. What were your thoughts? I'm friends with majority of Vanderpump cast. Are you? I love Vanderpump. I love the Toms. I've spent a lot of time in WeHo with the Toms, so that was hard for me. I've spent a lot of time with- Both the Toms. Ariana and Tom in- we, yeah, in here in WeHo. And it's, it was hard for me when all that came out because I knew them as a couple personally. What do you think of Tom Sandoval? I wish him the best. I'm going to have to go watch that. What's that show called? Special Forces. Yeah, I saw him at BravoCon and I had no idea what I'd say to him if I saw him. My husband talked to him and I just kind of went, okay. Why? Just because you were afraid to interact with him or were you mad at him for what he did to Ariana? Like, yeah. Okay. I, I, it's, it's not... I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. I, haven't, I need to maybe have a few conversations with them. We are, yeah. The Tom that I knew, it just isn't the Tom that's presenting right now. How about that? It's, okay. And what, who, who is the Tom that you knew? Like, fun. Ariana was his queen. Like, um, very, Tom is fun. Like, very, like, he would always be like, can we get you anything? Like, can we help you out? Like, I remember us girls were up at uh, beaches or somewhere on upper level and he was like catering to everyone like do you need water what do you need what can i help you get you know like he was very caring and then to see this kind of like more weaselly slimy like version of himself come out was confusing for me but i still wish like he's still i don't want to say we're friends i'm more friends with tom shorts okay i but, mean i i i wish well both the toms but uh, i told this to tom when he was on uh, i wish him peace yeah. I want him to figure his shit out. I really do. Because I got to know Tom and, you know, after Scandival, I was on the show with him. And like, yeah, he's got good sides to him. But there's this, he, he is, seems very, very resistant to growth. It's the whole thing of just say I'm sorry and take accountability. Maybe go on pause for like at least a month. 
just let it pass for a month. Don't come out with a podcast that's like rubbing it in the. Th- I mean, it's brilliant marketing. I don't know. You do. Yeah, his you. marketing is pretty good. I, yeah. I have to. Yeah. I mean, maybe I need to do better at that. But I don't know. Until you walk someone's path, it's hard to to say. But obviously, I'm like women empowerment. So go, Ariana. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to take a break from the hard hitting questions we're leveling at you. That and was- are you? Ready for some texting office hours? Yes, and then we'll come back and uh, have some final questions for Whitney and send her on her way. Yes. Cool. All right, it's time for texting office hours. Peloton, you know them, you love them. Well, if you are looking to uh, get back uh, in a, a new workout routine for 2024, you got to check out Peloton. Help, let Peloton help you get where you want to go when it comes to your wellness goals. Peloton helps you start no matter what level you are at, wherever you're starting. There are thousands of classes to get you moving, whether that's beginner or advanced rides, feel good live DJ rides or artist theme rides. They have something for you. Peloton bike instructors keep you motivated from day one. They'll show you the basics, help take the guesswork out of your workout, which I feel like is always the hardest part about working out is you have to guess and figure out and think about what workout to do next. Yeah, it's like, like oh make my a God. Playlist. It's, right, like, right, oh, it's too so hard. Cool. Like, just yeah. tell me what to do. Give me the music. They also have Peloton entertainment to keep you moving so you can watch your favorite TV show, live sports as you ride. So if you're like, oh, I don't want to miss this game. Oh, just hop on the bike, watch the game, do the ride. It's perfect. And if you're a competitive person, you can compete compete with your friends across the globe wherever they are at as long as they have peloton as well you can get your class on with the people you love regardless of where they're at wherever you are starting get moving with a peloton bike or bike plus rental at www.onepeloton.com slash bike slash rentals terms apply again that's www.onepeloton.com slash bike slash rentals start 2024 off right with peloton MeUndies. Great underwear. Give the gift of underwear. Whether you're married, single, focusing on friendships, or stuck in a never-ending spiral of situationships, everyone deserves to celebrate love. Mm, truly. While MeUndies can't get the F-boy to commit, they can offer you insanely comfy yet sexy undies and loungewear to buy or gift this holiday. I can verify all of the above. Wearing MeUndies in this moment. Prove it's it. truly comfortable. They've got so many awesome Valentine's Day prints. They're actually so cute. Yeah. All of their products will make you want to curl in a ball or purr with joy. Plus, you can match your me undies yeah. with your boo. Test your man's masculinity with me undies because if you give him a pair of matching underwear and he's like, mm, then that, you know, he, and if he's too cool to wear matching underwear with you, break up with him. I'm serious. There's no better way to feel connected than matching. Matching underwear. Yeah. Or clothes in general. But like, let's just start with your underwear. And if he is a baby about it, that's a that's a huge red flag. I mean, if you can't have fun matching underwear, what can you do? So test the strength of your relationship and get comfortable underwear this Valentine's Day, all with me undies. This Valentine's Day, give the gift that will always have them thinking of you and get 20% off your first order plus free shipping at meundies.com slash vilefiles. That's meundies.com slash V-I-A-L-L-F-I-L-E-S for 20% off plus free shipping. Me undies, M E U N D I E S dot com slash vile files comfort from the outside in. How's it going? Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm 29. I'm from Orange County, and I dated a real ex husband from the Real Housewives of Orange County. And I'm having trouble coping with his cruelty after our breakup. Okay. Um, are, you able, are you able to reveal who this is? Can I guess? Yes. Wait, Wait is he still yeah, on? Yeah, is he still? Guess. So he's an ex house husband. Is his ex wife still on? But he was on a couple seasons. Ago. Okay. His wife's still on. She's still a housewife. No. Okay. I. It's um. What's that guy's name? It's not. It's like sway. It's not. You sway. got it right already. <laughs> yeah. You know who With I'm talking that? about? Gretchen's <laughs> I ex. Know who you're talking about? Is it Gretchen's ex husband? No. Slade. Um, Slade. So her name is Bronwyn, and I'm dating. I dated Sean. <laughs> Who, That's I, not don't know, I don't know who this of. is. Who is this person? <laughs> Bring her, Allie. Bronwyn was on, I think, I don't know. I didn't really watch the show before her. Like 15, maybe? Yeah, she was on just a couple years before Salt Lake started. She okay. left him for a woman, uh-huh. many women. And then she's good now. Like, I really, I, we, we vibe. We're good now. Like, an enemy of an enemy is my friend. No, yeah. <laughs> and she, does she know you're calling? Can pass it? Yeah, we um, talked this morning. Yeah, Bron- oh, I know Bronwyn. Tell Bronwyn I said hi. Yeah, hey. <laughs> oh, wow. We were and texting this morning. I called her just Can like, wait, you dated this, sure Sean? 
Yeah, I did. And it was Do stupid. you know Sean? Do you know him? I don't know so him, but I know Bronwyn. Oh, I didn't... <laughs> I, I've met Bronwyn. I know Bronwyn. Uh, what does you Sean know, look like? I know so much about that relationship that is just beyond. Like, I, I learned that you can never trust what you see online. Yeah, well, that is, uh, that is how true. How did you meet him? I, I... Wow. So, technically, my hairstylist is, well, was, the like best friends with her makeup stylist on the show. And so, because we had mutuals, he liked like a bunch of my photos. And then messaged me and we met up for coffee. I'm telling you, it's always the glam. All of the messiness. Right? Oh all of the drama. I'm like the glam. Most, like, honestly, though, I'm like the most basic, like, never had anything done. Like, want to. So he, sought, wrong, he like, sought you out through photos? <laughs> oh, he's a yeah, hockey player? Heard, but you have to keep in mind, like, at mm-hmm. first I thought, like, this is a rich guy. I know him from the show a little bit. I didn't really watch it at the time. And because I was watching back when, like, Gretchen and Tamara were on it. You know, like in high school. Like, way back in the day. <laughs> And so, like, I'm just seeing him. And then when we meet, he's like, oh, there might be camera. It was very weird. It was very weird. Did he use the cameras to lure you in to date him? No, not at all. What was that what he was trying to say, though? When I dated him, there might be cameras. It might be weird. He's like flexing. No, he said that in person and it freaked me the hell out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Like, I was like, what are you talking about? Like, who are you? What is happening? Are you on cheaters? Like, what is happening? (laughs) How long do y'all date for? 13 months. Oh, wow. wow. And you know what's upsetting is that there have been interviews. If you really go back to like April last year and there are interviews where a girlfriend is mentioned as being like super young and stupid and whatever. There was a lot of animosity between us because of what he said to her and versus like what I was told by him and realizing he was a liar in all of this. I don't know. It was it was a lot in 13 months, but. Sorry. All right. So other yeah. than the <laughs> kind of the shock value of who this is all about, <laughs> how, how, what are you actually struggling with and how can we help? We met mutual friends, went out for coffee, started dating. Second date, I'm meeting all of his kids and he has seven on like the second date. That's kind of weird. Very weird. And it is weird. Like it was intimidating for me. I wasn't prepared. I'm a stepmom to kids close to my age that's weird yeah it is weird yeah. yeah and I was like astonished by it and then of course you want to like hook up that night everything's going on so it started in 2021 we dated and then in February of 2022 Bronwyn first heard from her kids that we were hanging out that I had seen them and I didn't know that she didn't know and she flipped the hell out respectfully were they you know? married at the time Te- yeah technically oh okay Oh, wow, shit. Did she have her girlfriend yet, though? Um, She had Vic at the time. Okay. Yeah, so they were, like, nesting and doing this thing where they would, like, stay at the same house in Newport. Yeah, I had friends that And just go in that. and out, which caused animosity because then they would judge each other off, like, what each was doing when they were gone. Mm-hmm. Stupid. And then um, I would see his kids all the time, but then come February, I think Koa, who's, like, this, I think she might be, like, six or seven now, had said something, like, playfully to her mom, like, she should. She's five, you know, and she freaks the hell out. And I start getting harassing messages, DMs, posts, like comments. And she would say the most vile things to me. Understandably now, like looking back, understanding the situation, I get it. But like at the time, it was a lot. I mean, sent me stuff like you're trash. No one wants you on earth. You shouldn't be here. You're disgusting. You're a whore. I'm going to call your job and tell them that you have a DUI, like the worst. Oh my God. And I'm 27. Hurt He's people, 27. hurt people, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. She was upset. Sorry. And I know that there's yeah. a lot of red flags in this. Like, obviously, he's going through a separation, has seven kids, and is 20 years older than me. I get it in retrospect, but like, I don't know. I was like really into them, you know? And he was telling me he loved me a bunch. So, all this stuff is going on with Bronwyn. I'm 27. I'm trying to act like I'm as mature as these people. I don't say anything. I never responded to her out of 13 months for 12 months. I did not ever respond to a message, a DM, anything, because that's the mother of his children. So I have no place, no right to disrespect anything she's asking. Eventually, what happens is on my birthday in October 2022, we break up because he couldn't stand up for me, couldn't put his foot down. I feel like he was still in love with her. And then also he showed up two hours late to my birthday dinner. And then like the next night we had planned for my birthday, he didn't show up. Like, just didn't, no text, just didn't show up. Um, so I broke up with him the next day on Halloween. And then I never got a, an apology. I never got anything back. I had to beg him for my keys back to my apartment, which he was living in half the time, by the way, because 
the money is not all there. Like it's, I don't know. It's just, it's very toxic. I mean, I just read an article that he like stole all their money or something. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm part of that article. Like if you look back to like April, it's like, he's spending it all on her, but he's not paying child support. He um, is living with the girlfriend now that is new, but point is we broke up, no apology, no nothing. I had to beg him for my keys back. And then it's been, this happened very recently, like a week ago. He's been dating some new girl that he's posted about. Um, don't know her name. Never seen her in my life. Don't know her handle, where she lives, nothing. And I get a slew of like degrading messages from his profile. And I have like the screenshots to prove it. You're fat. You have cellulite. You're too, too white, too ugly. And then she said something along the lines and feel free to bleep this out if you want. But like, I'm pregnant with his baby. We're going to and drop it on your fucking front porch. Like what it's the- disgusting. To the point where I was straight up like, is this okay? And I told them I'm, so I get all these messages. So is this coming from his new girlfriend or him? From his account. And I don't know that it's his girlfriend at the time. You think it's coming from him? It's coming literally from Sean Burke's account. Yeah. Wow. And he had had me blocked. So I was like, whatever, like, this is weird. So instead of texting, I just decide to like call him and be like, what the fuck is going on? So I call him. And the girl answers. And I and immediately when she answers, when she says hello, I'm just like, oh, this is the new girlfriend. Got it. Hung up. Blocked the profile. And then I get messages from LinkedIn. Like LinkedIn of all places. Why is she harassing you, though? I don't know. And it's so weird because I don't know her name. Bronwyn barely knows her, has never met her. Knows her name is Nikki, but like doesn't know her. But what handle is she using to reach out to you? Is or is it his. Sean? Why does okay. she have it's his? his? It's his. I can show you literally through the screen, like from his profile. It's so weird. Like it's, it was from his. So I call him that it's night like and I'm like, Monica what the stuff. fuck is going on? The girl <laughs> answers. She hangs up. I'm like, okay, that's cool. She keeps sending messages through TikTok, Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm blocking them, blocking them. Starts making fake profiles <laughs> and going after me, responding to my stories of like joking about it. And I figure, look, this guy works a full-time job. I'm going to call him the next day knowing he's not going to be with her like at his work. I call him and this is the end of it. And I call him at like 11 a.m. And I was like, what the fuck happened? Like if your girl messages me one more time, I'm going to the police. She knew where I worked. She knew where I lived. She knew every detail about me, which is weird because I don't know her name. Is her name Monica? <laughs> um, and oh she's God. like my age, I think. And I just, so I, I threatened him with that. And then his response, and this is the, the gist of it. He responded with, I don't know why you're so upset. I never loved you. You were just there. You were just an object to me. Verbatim. I have it also in a text. So my problem is, is why do guys say that? Like he lived with me like half the time. Like I have a one bedroom apartment in Orange County. It's not like glamorous. You know, it's a lot for like someone trying to do their best, but like, it's not, he was, it's not Cota de Casa, you know? So what are you struggling? I mean, those are very hurtful things to hear, no doubt, from anyone. But what are, what are you struggling with? Mostly when a guy after a relationship comes at you and says, after obviously saying he loves you a bunch and being with you, why feel the need when you're proclaiming to the world that you have this new girl that you love? Why feel the need to reduce a woman, your ex, to like an object saying you never loved her? And did he mean that? And if he didn't, am I... Is he an asshole or if he did, am I stupid? Are you wondering if he's an asshole? Oh, no, he's an asshole. Okay. But I'm wondering more on like, because this hasn't been the first time this has happened with men in my life of a guy loving you, love bombing you, leaving you, and then acting like he never loved you. Why do you guys do that? I can't speak for all men. Well, uh, obviously. Um, but unfortunately, there are shitty people out there. You know, and there are self-centered people out there and there are toxic people out there, abusive people out there. And he, as you recognize when you tell this story, I mean, I don't know how you hear this story, but it sounds nuts from our point it of view. It is actually yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah. And we've sounds all- like housewives. Yeah, we all make mistakes. It was a year yeah. of that. <laughs> we all chase the wrong people. You know, if you listen to this show, we all, you know, chase validation and all those things. Yeah. But like, you need to be able to look back and see- this story how we see this story you know when when, and I get it. when this it's episode nuts. comes out and you listen to this and hear yourself talk i mean being serious you should like honestly listen to it as if like you're not the caller a lot of people do actually when they call on this show and you should hear how it sounds you know I, again i can't speak for all men but like this isn't like the first time it's happened though so, like yeah. other guys have treated me like shit after and i just don't feel that I, I don't get the random reaching out to 
just make someone feel like shit for so no reason. Can I step in for Please, a second? Yeah. I wouldn't generalize to say it's a guy thing. This is a person right. thing. This is a human thing. And this might be hard to hear, but I'm going to say it because I want you to succeed. So this is a cycle that you found yourself in, right? Yeah. People that don't love me. Yeah. When, <laughs> and that you're attracting, you're attracted to this type of person. So mm -hmm. clearly there is some sort of cycle that you are personally stuck in. And, you know, like Nick said, listen to this and maybe pick out something that resonates with you of that you can recognize that, oh, that's it. This is where I trip up. This is what I need to look yeah. inward on or, but only you can you know, answer that for yourself. For me personally, I lived in a cycle for 36 years. And finally, one day I said, enough, I'm done. I cannot do that anymore. But 100%. it was hard to look at myself in the mirror to realize that I was the person allowing it to happen. And I was seeking validation in the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been 14 months. I haven't dated anyone. I haven't been with anyone. Um, it really took an on me um, during the relationship. And then obviously afterwards, it's just continued. I take accountability for the fact that I obviously have a low self-worth. Like who would be in that situation? Who had self-respect? Like I, and that's, I'm so grateful because I've grown in that aspect. So I do know that it sounds Looney Tunes and it was, but I have learned from it. But I guess my lingering question is just, I just feel so stupid. Mm -hmm. Like, it, I know I was young. I was 27. I'm still only 29. I'm young. But you do grow in the 20s, like, exponentially. I mean, we all make mistakes. I had this conversation with someone I care about recently. You're still thinking very much about, like, uh, what this says about you. Yeah, I'm insecure. And you are still giving him the power to determine your own self-worth. You know, why would yeah. he do this? Who gives a shit? He's a dick. He wanted to hurt you. But you are still evaluating the relationship. What did it mean? Did he ever love me? I don't know. I don't care. As someone who's listening to your story, I just know it sounds like this guy is not capable of genuine love, of putting other people before him, of being empathetic and compassionate and selfless and caring. He has a track record of this, and you just have to see it for what it is. You know, That's, that's so hard, too, after coming out of life being cheated on, abused. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it is genuinely hard. It's easier said than done, obviously. I, but I, I, do I get it. And I'm sure there are points of your relationship where you had probably fun with them. And despite oh, all the horrible stories that you have about the relationship now, you want that relationship to mean something. It was 13 months of your life, you know, and it's hard to lose that stuff. But instead of trying to find meaning in something that's over, like you just have to start seeing it for what it is. Like you ignoring red flags, you know, right. you giving him an opportunity to make you feel special because you can't do that on your own right now. Yeah. And just recognizing that, putting it out there. All right. And now, and yeah. instead of beating yourself up, well, I'm stupid. I couldn't have done this and, and feeling sorry for yourself because <laughs> that doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah. You just do something about it. Are you in therapy? Yeah. Yes, I, I've tried. I mean, this Amazing. has been like our, our relationship ended in like October. So it's been I'm good. But you're still um, but you're still struggling. And maybe it's, it's a journey I'm struggling with just the, the verbiage of like, you're just an object like you were nothing. I think that's what got me versus the relationship ending. Like, I don't really give a shit. The people <laughs> who know, you know how to hurt you. You know, he yeah, just he knows I he knows it. what to say. <laughs> he is lit. He's trying to he hurt you. also. Why have we not blocked this person? That's a good question. I think I unblocked him to call him that day, mm. but usually we've been blocked on everything. Usually. So that means you've gone back and forth a little bit. No, that means that when his girlfriend started messaging from his account, they had to unblock me. So he had done like social media. I did like numbers. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, I listen, I think you like the drama. I can't determine when he unblocks me. <laughs> Who gives a, no, it doesn't matter. I don't care about how he follows you or not follows you. I shouldn't you. have responded. You're you, right. You need to eliminate you access. Yeah, you can't <laughs> let these people have access to and you. And so you're you're allowing him to have access. Uh, yeah, and you should ask yourself course. why, you know. I wanted the sorry. I'm never going to get the sorry. This you're never going to get the yeah. sorry. He's not ever. sorry. He's not sorry. I've never broken up with a guy and not gotten him like crying to me three months. Not that I'm but like the special like little thing, but, but I'm just saying like. That's your ego. We usually 
Yeah. That's your saying, oh, well, it didn't work out, so I need him to regret it. I need him to be sorry. What if and he I'm going to leave this door open yeah. just in case. And that's why you don't right. block him. He's gonna... Because you're giving him well, an opportunity to come back. Sorry. <laughs> well, you got, and I say this with love, you kind of have to get over yourself and right. your ego. And then you have to ask yourself, like, again, what kind of relationships do you want? Like, at some point, you're clearly an intelligent person. Whitney got to a point where she's like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done doing this. And you kind of have to take accountability and do the work. And I'm glad you're in therapy and doing the work, but just going to therapy is a start and it's a great start because that's hard to do. But you, yes. you might not necessarily be applying what you're learning in therapy, or maybe you don't have a good therapist. You need a new one. I don't know, but <laughs> I've also been sober, which I have to say in the past 30 days. Has Amazing. Been awesome. Congratulations. For like whoever wants to do it. Yes. <laughs> so that's awesome. So that's progress, yeah. but like, it's just nice to be like clear headed. <laughs> eventually you're, you're going to have to recognize as Whitney's pointed out that when it comes to bringing drama into your life, you are fully responsible. 100%. And you have totally to agree. And you have tools like blocking, literal, like at, literal tools, <laughs> uh, and then tools that hopefully you're learning in therapy to hold yourself accountable to limit these toxic people from your circle. That's how you learn to receive attention, love, and validation. And your body doesn't know the difference between positive and negative attention. It just seeks validation. Yeah. It's stimulation. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So like the adrenaline. Right? Are you capable <laughs> of forgiving yourself? Because hearing you talk, hearing Nick's great advice, are you capable of forgiving yourself? Could you look at yourself in the mirror right now and say, uh, I am sorry? I think I could do it to other people more than myself. And I feel like you could understand that. Like I can't mm -hmm. talk about it because I'll get yeah, but well, it's go a look. Hard. I challenge you then, at, when you feel ready, look at yourself in the mirror. Just take a quiet moment, yeah, and say, "I'm sorry that I've allowed my, I've allowed you to do this." But yeah, we're making changes, and it's okay if I mess up and do it again. But I'll, I'll get better and better with time. Yeah, and 2024 is going to be awesome. There you go. <laughs> it is. It's a year of abundance, baby. Uh, it is. Yeah. All right, guys. Can I, I can I, can so I much. make a suggestion? Yeah, of course. I don't, yeah. I don't know how close you are with. What's the housewife's name? Bronwyn. I, I think you need to say goodbye to her too. No offense yeah, to her. It's no offense to her. It's not, she's not the problem, no. but she is part of that world. It's and keeping she you out in. Whenever there's an issue in drama and it yeah, pulls me in. <laughs> exactly. And there's a part of you that very much likes it because like as Whitney very accurately pointed out, it's stimulation. It's, it's sti yeah, it's mm -hmm. excitement. It's drama. It's fun. You're it's still keeping, needed. It's distracting. Mm -hmm. You feel valued. Oh, maybe he'll regret it. Maybe he'll come around. That's on you. And you got to yeah. find the strength to, to say no. Yeah. I know. We just love being adults. It's so great. But also yeah. stop. I'm ready though. <laughs> stop letting this person's words affect you. You know, he obviously is not a good person right and yeah. you can't you have to stop letting him have access to you and his words affect how you feel i know it's really hard but obviously you know like you're a great person you have self-worth you know what you deserve his words should not carry so much weight in your life he knows what he's doing yeah, he's a dick. He knows <laughs> He knows when he says these very cruel things, he knows that you'll sit in it, evaluate it, wonder if it's true and respond. He's not stupid. Yeah. So you want to know why he says it? That's why. Control. He wants to control you. Even when he's not with you, he has another girlfriend, he wants to have power and control over you. And you got to recognize that so that you can stop it. You know, yeah. and you... I'm glad you called in for a lot of reasons. It's very entertaining Thank and you. hopefully was it was like, helpful. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, you, you do have to stop that now. 100%. You know, right you have that. to stop asking yourself, why does he do X, Y, or Z and stop evaluating him? Because that, that's just your ego. It's you trying to be yeah. enough. And a like, justice warrior. I've always been that way and I'm not okay with it. I don't think it's a no justice resolution. warrior. And I think that's an excuse, to <laughs> yeah. be honest with you. Yeah. It's and not about no, justice. You're right. I just, I'm, I'm, I short circuit when I don't have resolution. Well, that's that, a trait of mine. That's, so. you have to learn to just sit in the present and accept it for what it is because most things in life you're never going to have an answer to. Yeah. yeah. You'll never know why. Damn. <laughs> but the, the, the growth happens when you can move on. You yeah. made some choices, I've some shit happened. And now you have to move forward. 
10 years yeah. from now, right. you're not even going to remember this. Someone's going to bring up his name and you're going to be like, oh my that God, I weird. forgot yeah, about that. Totally. Thankfully, yeah, I'm that. not like heartbroken, but getting like told I was an object randomly. Yeah, after, you are like, not an object. Up, and I'm, like, what the you're fuck? not. <laughs> He's just trying yeah. to hurt you. Do not let his words, yeah. Yeah. do not believe that. But you got to well, get out of it. And the good news is you have all the control to get out of it. So <laughs> We're ready, guys. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank you for, uh, well, it was quite the, quite the call. But now it's time to protect yourself and move well, on and, and All right, guys. get well, away I from the drama. Have a wonderful year. All and right. yeah, thank you, you too. Well, thank you for the call. Yeah, good <laughs> luck. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. Can you um, hear it? She couldn't. Oh, wow. Oh, that was a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. Um, a few more questions, oh, Whitney. Okay. Uh, where do we stand with Mary? Ooh. Mary? Yeah, because she really came at you hard. Um, Unfairly yeah, so. She did. She Use made the some, R word. Yeah, she is has pretty slanderous. Um, believe it or not, Mary and I are friends now. Okay. Great. Yeah. We actually went to the same party that you're we all at. We met Mary yeah. that night. Yeah. That, and, and, and that was I, fun. I arrived at that party with Mary Cosby. <gasps> oh, okay. Yeah, oh Mary, gosh, Angie, and I you. went together. Yeah. I think I would like to have Mary on the show at some point. That would be a great interview. I would love to. I would love to watch that for yeah. sure. So Mary and I talked it out, and again, when two people are willing to have a conversation and hear each other and get the truth, it's easy to move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Mary, she's interesting for sure. But watching this season, you know, I feel like I'm pretty decent at reading people, but she was she was fascinating, you know, mm -hmm. and she she's intelligent. It seems like. Would you agree? Yes. Okay. But like remarkably sensitive for someone who's also can cut really deep. She's also very unpredictable too. And that used to be something that was hard for me to understand. But now I just rejoice in sitting back and watching her and learning from her. And yeah, she's, she's definitely one of those that can dish but can't receive. It was interesting because I wonder, because I think what she was trying to say at the reunion, I almost understood what she was saying. It's like, and would you say, would you, do you agree with this? Because this is how I interpreted what she said. It's like, say whatever you want to my face. Just don't say it behind my back. Because if you say it behind her back, it seems that like that'll really trigger her. But she seems to be open to you talking shit to her face. Yes. Is that, and that's, that's true? Facts, yeah. Okay. And learning that about her is why we were able to be friends again okay. because yeah clearly she called me unwarranted names and i'm so glad we had the opportunity to clarify that if i have in fact done or said something that i wasn't aware of and she said no but no mary you just have to say it to her face give her a phone call a text okay. message she'll give it right back mm -hmm. i don't mind that yeah yeah mm -hmm. but i actually i Never thought I'd say this, but I'm glad that we found a resolve. Do you think we'll see more of Mary next season? I mean, I'm seeing a lot of Mary right now. Okay. <laughs> so we I don't, hope. I can't answer that question. I don't know, but I talk to her frequently, like okay. daily. She Tell her little, I said hi. She, Tell her, should we call her? Can we? She'll kill me. I have to give her a heads up. Yeah, let her know that we're on. And, and okay. we can edit it out if she doesn't want it on. I wonder if she knows what a voice note, a voice text is. Let me just fast her. Hey, Mary, I'm recording a podcast right now in L.A. called The Vile Files with Nick Vile. And he wants to meet you. Can we call you? Are you comfortable with that? But we are recording a podcast, so you would be recorded. But he's one of your biggest fans and wants to talk to you. <laughs> so, She's going to get that and be like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder if she has ever done. I don't know. We've never done voice notes. Like she, uh, They'll oh text a lot. Like you're just throwing out that word in a text, like it's oh. no big deal. Oh my gosh, yeah, she really does, yeah. doesn't she? <laughs> yeah, she, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope she responds. <laughs> Me too. She, yeah, we'll see what she says. She, yeah, she looked at my belly because it was also oh, out yeah. at, at that party, and she went, oh, "You're having a boy," and Nick goes, "Close." <laughs> <laughs> But she was like certain. She was like, I can tell this belly. She's actually so endearing in her own way. Like she's she um I had so much fun with her in LA at that party. I, and mm -hmm. I enjoy watching. We pre game yeah. together. I yeah. even took her out to a gay bar after. Really? Yes. Yeah. It was 
It was her first time out and she loved it. She, okay. yeah, it was great. I think, do we have any other questions for Whitney? I mean, on the topic of Mary, I know she has her iconic like little girl line. Have you found the fact that maybe you're a younger housewife and you're a little bit more softer spoken? Like, have you found that as like a, I don't want to say disadvantage, but like, do you ever find that they kind of gang up on you in that sense? Oh, they absolutely gang up on me for my age, my voice, my looks, my size, everything. And so it's kind of like, are you calling me little because of my size? Like, why are you calling me little? My yeah. age? Either way, it's mm -hmm. patronizing. It's patronizing, yeah. but I I don't know why they continue to do it because I, so, I don't care. It's a, To me, it's a compliment and it shows their insecurity. <laughs> and I'm like... But like I'm happy to be here as one of the youngest housewives hired ever. Who do you think is the most insecure of your castmates? <laughs> Conquer. <laughs> Conquer. The makeup Conquer. thing's ridiculous. In the Palm glam, Springs. just oh. the glam for everything. That she really is. That's. I mean, she really has a a glam person she travel. Said, that's she goes what to she the grocery says. store. That's, yeah. that's she gets glam. Wild. I, I don't. Mean, yeah. Mary called her. <laughs> yeah. you know that's an insecurity in your, yeah. <laughs> I love that <laughs> we love Mary matter of fact um, yeah I I don't know I I'm around a lot of people who like are on TV every day like new, some of my friends are on the news news anchors whatever and they don't even freaking get glam every day like come on I don't know whatever Lisa says it so it has to be right yes the truth right I'm like, Mary, sometimes she texts back right away. Sometimes it takes. It'll probably be a while. Yeah. We'll tell her we said hi. I'll, um, we'll FaceTime. If okay. she call we'll do like, you can do a multiple yes. Yes. FaceTime. Yes. Great. So. Um, Whitney, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you for having we me. We had a ton of fun. I hope you had fun too. I had a blast. Any final thoughts? No, you have good reads on things. Okay. Yeah. The show's Thanks. great. Yeah. Thanks for having me. We love watching you guys. Uh, we wish you nothing but success. Congratulations on an epic season. I'm sorry it was emotionally draining. It's fine. That's but, uh, what we signed up for. We are very excited for next season, and we believe in you all Thank for you. delivering uh, without Monica. Yeah, and that's why I was going to say my final thought is don't give up on Salt Lake City. I'm not. So. And I brought you a gift. Oh, what is the gift? Just a little bit of... Some of my skincare, some oh, goodies okay. for everyone in the office. Uh, I Wild wanted Rose to bring Beauty. everyone jewelry. Where can but... people find this? WildRoseBeauty.com. Okay. Wow. Pretty simple. Damn. Wild Rose? Yeah. A full we got some bath bombs. That's the best thing that came out of the bathtub gate. <laughs> yes. Bath bombs. Mm -hmm. Anything for me? Yeah. That's for everyone. That's Everything for everyone. there. Okay. Do you take baths? Yeah. You can put it on the floor of your shower too. Not often, but but no, there's some cleanser, toner, Thank serums, you. moisturizers. It looks very wonderful. You got to rub that glow all over your belly. Yeah, packaging is very nice. I will. Thank you. I will. Thank you so much for coming, Whitney. It was yeah. great. Thank you for having Nick, me. Nick, did you know that they have the same age gap as us? Well, we're seventeen and a half, but her and Justin are eighteen years. Oh, look at us. <laughs> Except for you and I are the Cute. same age. <laughs> are we? I don't know. I'm 43. You're 43? Yeah. How, How old are you? you? 25. 25? I'm 37. Okay, so. So we're all. Slept out in yeah. the middle. Well, we'll devil date sometime. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we Swap will. Notes. So wait, how old were you when you met Justin? 21. I was 21 when I met Nick. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Ah. I was, yeah, so you're following a similar. We started dating similar, at 22. Yes. Yeah. And we you're 25 22. pregnant. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, you're following a similar trajectory. I met Justin at 21, had Bobby at 23. Oh my god! And still going strong. And still yeah, going 14 strong. years married, 16 together. What's your favorite thing about your relationship? Um, we accept each other as we are. Love that. Okay. Like, simple as that. Like, we're not always on the same page, but we're always in the same book. Love that. Absolutely. Period. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, tell him we said, tell him we said hi. And it, the second you're not in the same book, that's when you got to get back in there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we, we, in there. we work hard on being on the same book. Yeah. And the same page. Yeah. We're usually on the same page. We're yeah. always in the same book, but yeah. it's working sure. on being in the same page. And chapter. Or on, chapters. If yeah. you're in the chapter. same chapter, yeah, that's yeah. like winning. Yeah. Truly. We're there. Yeah. Most really. of the time. Well, yeah. congratulations. I wish Crazy. you all the best vibes. <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's gonna be a mama. I know. Well, Can't thank wait. you guys for listening. Don't forget to send in those questions at asknick at thevalfiles.com for all things texting, office hours, mediation, you know, you know the drill. Uh, thanks for listening. We'll see you back on Monday. Crazy. Bye.
Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.